the Miami Hurricanes turned to youth as they routed Rutgers 55 to nothing. True freshman Ken Dorsey's first start a successful one, 19 of 26, 196 yards and two touchdowns. Another true freshman, Clinton Portis, posted his fifth 100-yard rushing day of the season. He is now the freshman rushing record holder, 697 yards on the season. The Miami defense was at its best, holding the Scarlet Knights to a measly 64 yards in total offense. The Kane defense only one off the school record as they came up with 10 sacks of Rutgers quarterbacks. The special teams also outstanding. Santana Moss with an electrifying 67-yard punt return for a touchdown. He'll have to be sharp today as the Canes make their bid for postseason. It's Miami and Syracuse next here on Sports Channel. in Miami, Florida. Sports Channel presents Miami Hurricane Football. Today, the Hurricanes take on the Orangemen of Syracuse. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Forch with my partner, John Congemi. John, both teams come into this ball game with a 6-4 and four record. Miami, with a victory today, can qualify for postseason. They hope to go to the Gator Bowl as the number two team from the Big East. That doesn't happen without a victory today. Now, if they do go to postseason, a babe shall lead them. True freshman Ken Dorsey, his first start last week against Rutgers, very impressive, but should have a much tougher time against the Syracuse defensive outfit. You're right, Frank. He had a great first performance last week against Rutgers. You take a look at the numbers, 19 to 26 for 194 yards, two touchdowns, did not throw an interception, but what I liked was the pass timing in the offense. He moved the football terrifically through the air and he threw the football where he needed to put it. He was very protective of it. You see the play action and then the pass in the flat to back up tight end. Ivan Mercer, he goes in for the score. I thought he directed the offense well and then a quarterback stream from the one. You, you tuck it in behind your big offensive lineman. You see Martin Bibla. You see there Eric Snup in front of him. He does a great job of leading the offense. But today, Frank, as you said, a much tougher defense in Syracuse. You'll see much more speed at the linebacker position and much more veteran leadership up front. A tougher task for Ken Dorsey today. Did a great job of spreading the ball around last week. And when Miami's successful, it usually means they found a way to get the ball to the big tight end, Bubba Franks, who this week was named first team All-American by the football news. A quarterback stream at tight end. You see his season statistics, 35 receptions, 434 yards, Four touchdowns. He'll have a big mismatch on Syracuse's small McIntosh, the strong safety for the Orangemen. He's only 5'9", Big Bubba at 6'6". He will be able to utilize that middle of the field, and that could help Ken Dorsey looking to move the chains in the middle of the football field. The key to this game, I think, is the Miami defense. They've played very well throughout most of the year, and if they play the way they have the last three weeks, John, they should have a pretty good shot because they have make, been making a ton of plays behind the line of scrimmage. Well, the numbers speak for themselves. You see plays for zero yards against Pitt 24, Virginia Tech 18, and Rutgers 20, but plays for negative yardage, the most important tackles for loss against Pitt, 8. You see Virginia Tech, 15, and Rutgers, 14. They're going to have to play with a high level of aggression today because they don't want to let the Orangemen break out early. And what they can do, they can really force the quarterback in the pocket to feel uncomfortable. You see there a gang of tacklers. Matt Sweeney let him here. The middle linebacker, Nate Webster, gets to the quarterback. Now today, Troy News and Williams, we're not sure who's going to start, but they'll probably play most of the game and split the game. So a little bit more mobile quarterback in the pocket, but the Miami defense, they have to do it with aggression. No big plays out of that Syracuse quarterback position. The good news for Miami is neither one of them is Donovan McNabb. They're both dangerous, but they're not Donovan. Defensively, the Orangemen, strikingly similar, at least statistically, to the Miami defense and they're led by their middle linebacker, Keith Bullock. From sideline to sideline, Frank, this guy can run and beat you. You see the season tackles, 124 total tackles, tackles for loss, 11, and sacks, too. And he leads the Big East in average total tackles per game with 13.8. So you know he's going to be around the football. Miami's offensive linemen need to find him and put a hat on him all day long. No question about that. It's the 6-4 and four Miami Hurricanes against the 6-4 and four Syracuse Orangemen. We'll have the opening kickoff from the Orange Bowl right after this on Sports Channel. Hurricanes football on Sports Channel is being brought to you in part by Office Depot. Business is crazy, but Office Depot makes sense. By Mercedes. Visit your South Florida Mercedes-Benz Center today. By the Cleveland Clinic, because everyone deserves world-class care. By Nextel, how business gets done. Call 1-800-NEXTEL-9. And by AutoNation USA. It's about change. It's about time. with you at the Orange Bowl as we're getting ready for kickoff between the Orangemen of Syracuse 
and the Hurricanes of Miami. Syracuse won the toss and they deferred to the second half. Miami will receive the football and go on offense first. Beautiful, bright, sunny day as you can see in the Orange Bowl. Temperatures in the high 70s, about 80 degrees and just a great day to play. And Miami, once again, John, second week in a row, will go with the green uniforms, the third or alternate jersey. And we didn't mention it in the open, but of course, everybody knows last year, Syracuse up in the Carrier Dome just embarrassed Miami 66 to 13 behind a sky high Donovan McNabb and company. And talking to the Miami players this week, they said, well, it doesn't motivate you on game day. What it does is motivate you during the week. Watch extra film, do extra preparation, knowing that you got embarrassed. And Matt Sweeney in particular said, we're going to do everything we can this week to make them feel like we felt a year ago. Well, Frank, 66 to 13, it was a, an old fashioned beating up at the Carrier Dome. It was senior day for a lot of the uh, seniors from Syracuse. They had big days, especially the quarterback, Donovan McNabb. So University of Miami and Butch Davis and staff, they have to get an opportunity to get into this football game and get into rhythm early. And that's uh, all on the shoulders of Ken Dorsey, the young quarterback. I think it's going to be key for him to protect the football, come out with a little bit of running game, but as they did against Rutgers last week, they really spread the football out early, and they let Ken Dorsey throw the football and use his ability inside and outside of the pocket. Well, Miami will get a chance to move the football first. Butch Davis, 6-4, and four, looking for a victory, which will qualify the Hurricanes for a bowl. Under normal circumstances, you need six wins, but when you play a 12-game schedule, as Miami has this year, you need seven wins to get into a bowl game. Nate Trout, the senior, will kick it off for the Orangemen. Santana Moss and Aaron Mosier back to receive for the Hurricanes. And we're underway from the Orange Bowl. This will be Mosier at the 6. 20, tripped up as he crosses the 20 to the 21-yard line. Number 81, David Tyree, backup wide receiver, made the tackle for Syracuse. As you take a look at the former walk-on, Aaron Mosier, one of the best athletes on the Miami team, a two-time Big East decathlon champion. They'll mark it out at the 24. That's where Ken, where Ken Dorsey will start first and 10. The true freshman is second start at quarterback. There are his numbers on the season. And, of course, most of that damage came last week against Rutgers. Joined in the backfield by Mondrell Fulcher and the other true freshman, Clinton Portis. We'll check the entire Miami offense after this first play. Fake to Portis. Dorsey, sideline, pass is caught by Moss. Took it right away from Will Allen, the defender, the completion up to the 36-yard line, and that'll be a Miami first down. Bit of a dangerous throw, John, but Santana Moss went up and took it away. Well, it was dangerous the way Ken Dorsey threw the ball. One wasn't one of his best throws in the last couple of weeks. Came out kind of like a knuckleball to the outside, and that's where you don't want to float the football. But watch Santana Moss attack the football after the play action. The ball kind of hangs up there. Watch Santana Moss go up and take the football away from Will Allen. That was the key for the completion. Portis, the only running back. Fulcher in a wing right. Give this to Portis. Hit in the backfield, squirms away, and gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. And it'll bring up second and long for the Hurricanes. Richie Simpkins made the tackle. Here is the Miami offense. Clinton Portis, the U.M. freshman, rushing record holder now. And Module Fulcher is the fullback along with Dorsey. Santana Moss, six touchdown receptions on the season, joined by the All-American Franks and Reggie Wayne. Ty Wise playing with a broken rib and a disc problem in his back, but he is gutting it out here today against the Orangemen. Give Portis a gain of one on the last play. It'll be second and nine. We'll check out the Syracuse defense after this play. Dorsey, pass to Fulcher is complete. Trying to get away, but cannot from Moreland Greenwood, who holds it to a minimal gain of two. Greenwood, the junior out of Freeport, New York. Let's take a look at the Syracuse defense, and we, uh, we're we going to have to wait on that because we're having a little bit of problem with the graphic. But it's Duke Pettijohn, Richie Simpkins, Eric Downing, and Donald Dinkins across the front. Vernon Banks, Keith Bullock, and Moreland Greenwood, the linebackers. Will Allen, Ian McIntosh, Quentin Harris, and Willie Ford are the deep backs. It's going to be third and seven for Miami from their 39-yard line. Movement along the line of scrimmage. Syracuse definitely jumped into the neutral zone. We'll see if they were drawn off. Miami's players pointing at the Orangemen. Here is our referee, Jack Kramer, heading the Big East crew today. Offside against Syracuse, so that'll make it a third and about two and a half as they'll march off five. That'll make it a little bit easier on third down for Butch Davis and that offensive staff. 
Larry Coker up in the box. A little bit easier play call on third and two. You'll see if Ken Dorsey goes under the center. It looks like he will. Hurricanes line up with three wideouts in the formation on third and short. Portis the only running back. Dorsey under pressure. Flips it out complete to Portis. Portis with blockers in front across the 50 into Syracuse territory and down to the Syracuse 47 yard line. Willie Ford, number 15, sophomore cornerback making the tackle, but that is enough for a Miami first down as Portis picked up eight on the screen pass. Frank, very similar circumstance against Virginia Tech. Miami used a screen play early in the game. Looked like it would go for big yardage. That time it goes for a couple more yards than they needed for the first down, but watch the host of players in green jerseys out in front. You see Richard Mercier and Ty Wise both get good blocks down the, down the football field and Portis goes north and south gets enough for the first down Miami and their standard personnel group on a first and ten and again Syracuse in the neutral zone and you can probably hear Kenny Dorsey changing up the cadence John and he's pulling the orange one offside twice now yeah terrific voice inflection by Ken Dorsey that time a quarterback can be his his own uh, best friend with uh, an easy five yard pickup on a penalty and the linemen are going back and thanking him for it now this might go against Miami, and wow. it does. I didn't see any movement. Syracuse jumped in there, but it's going to be a first and 15. I didn't see anybody move on the offensive line. Possibly could have been a hand just moving in the in the uh, middle of the line. We didn't pick up, but uh, that puts Miami at a first and 15 now. Back at the Miami 48-yard line. They stay with standard personnel. Andre King is the wide receiver to the top of the screen. Reggie Wayne to the bottom. On first down, Dorsey flips it out incomplete, going for Portis at the Miami 44-yard line. It'll bring up second and 15. Portis, the freshman running back, has only two catches for 13 yards this year. One of them went for a touchdown. That came in the West Virginia game. As far as running the football, 120 carries, 697 yards. That's a 5.7 average, and he has scored six rushing touchdowns. Second and 15, Miami, 12-25, left to go first quarter, just underway at the Orange Bowl. Dorsey gives to Portis. Portis to midfield and gets to the Syracuse 49-yard line. Quentin Harris, number 29, Ian McIntosh, number two, and Ricky Simpkins, number 98, all combining on the tackle. It'll bring up a third and 12 for Miami. Well, Frank, that was a little bit of a gambling down for Syracuse on defense. They brought a lot of pressure, came with a blitz up the middle. Miami caught him in the blitz with the draw play, but really nowhere to run. A lot of white jerseys, orange helmets in the middle of that football field. Miami in, a, in their first third and long at third and 12. Three wide receivers in the formation for the Hurricanes. Franks in motion. Dorsey under pressure, and he will be sacked. Keith Bullock, number 33, along with Duke Pettijohn, 49, get credit for the sack, and Miami will be forced to kick. Just not a very good job to the, at the point of attack by Joaquin Gonzalez, the right tackle. Bubba Franks purposely comes into motion to help the protection to the strong side. You take a look at the top of your screen, 73 just fans. The guy goes right by him to his outside. You see number 54, one of the linebackers came in on that nickel defense and really snuffed out Ken Dorsey. There's Freddie Capshaw's punt bouncing inside. Hits Mosier at the one and will be down right there. Well, that was by accident. Aaron Mosier just turned around. The ball hit him right in the face mask, but they'll take it. First time out on the field, 11 minutes and five seconds left to go in the first quarter. It's Miami nothing, Syracuse nothing. We'll be back with the Orangeman first possession right after this. No five left to go first quarter. We're scoreless. Watch Aaron Mosier on the right side of your screen get shoved toward the end zone. Now he is in, his feet are in the end zone, and the ball hits his head outside the end zone. It was my understanding that you couldn't be in the end zone to down a ball like that, but the referee may have determined that he was pushed in there and therefore a legal play, a legal downing of the punt, the Freddie Capshaw punt at the Syracuse one-yard line. John, for Miami on defense, it's all about how they defend the option. Troy Noons, number 11, is the starting quarterback, completing 58% of his passes, 11 touchdowns, four interceptions. Well, definitely Miami has to come out with an attitude, and they're at a big advantage right now. Syracuse at their own one-yard line, and they've got the crowd on the uh, west side of the end zone in this Orange Bowl Stadium really up in, in a frenzy. So Miami has to take advantage of the special teams play by Aaron Mosier. They've got him pinned down at the one. Let's see if they can make a turnover or go three plays and outs. And you see the starting quarterback, Troy Noons, 
the freshman out of Pittsburgh, he'll, he'll direct the Orangemen from their one. And Miami going with four linebackers, only three defensive backs. So they are expecting Syracuse to try and run the football. Rod Mack in as an extra linebacker. Miami has only one cornerback, Mike Rumpf, number eight in the game. Normally you like to, if you're gonna take a shot on first down, you like to go somewhere deep. But as you said, Frank, a full house backfield to start for the Orangemen. Everybody in tight for Syracuse. Double tight end, 87 Brominski, 88 Bennett. And Miami jumps into the neutral zone, and let's see if they were drawn off. Got to keep your discipline in a situation like this, John. It's going to be against right, the Hurricanes. The Upside, defense, five-yard penalty, go first down. Well, that, that's just a freebie. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You've got the crowd into the game, your defense on the one-yard line, and you lose your concentration, and Butch Davis can't be happy with the way it starts for Miami's defense. Take a look at the interior line right over the nose of the football. You have to watch the football. You're right in front of it. You see there, big number 92, Damian Lewis, gets involved in the contact, but you got to watch the football with the big fella. First and five now for the Orangemen as they get a freebie and some breathing room out to the six. Again, the full house backfield. Give us to D. Brown. Brown to the eight yard line. Chris Campbell, number 48, pulling him backward. And it'll bring up second and about three. Here's the rest of the offense. D. Brown, who just carried the tailback out of Altamont Springs, Florida. The wide receivers, Quentin Spot with 30 catches on the air, three touchdowns. He is the top Syracuse receiver. Offensive line led by honors candidate Mark Banowitz at the left offensive tackle. Gain of two on the last play for D. Brown. Out to the eight yard line. It's a second and three for Syracuse. 10 minutes, 33 seconds left to go first quarter. Scoreless in the Orange Bowl. Now Syracuse back to their standard eye set with two wide receivers. Nunes under pressure in the end zone. Throwing complete to Brominski at the 10, and he is hammered right there by Mike Rump and then helped out by Chris Campbell. He's a yard and a half shy of a first down. Michael Barreau nearly had Nunes for a safety. Nearly had him for a safety. A big play almost for the uh, Miami defense there. Let's take a look at the Hurricane defense. Matt Sweeney very vocal this week about the embarrassment suffered last year and promising revenge. Among the linebackers, Nate Webster this week's second team All-American by the football news. Morgan and Campbell round out a very fine group. Mike Rump with four interceptions. The sophomore leads the Hurricane secondary. It's third and a yard and a half. And a timeout being called. It's going to be charged to Syracuse. Looked like they had D. Brown ready to line up and take the snap at quarterback, John, which he does on occasion. And he does run the option from that situation. We saw in the pregame, Frank, we were out on the field. D. Brown running the option. Looks like a, a natural option quarterback. Let's take a look at the comparison of the Syracuse quarterbacks, and obviously trying to replace Donovan McNabb is not an easy task, but Mighty Williams and Troy Noons this year, and you look at the numbers, Noons, it seems, is the better thrower, Williams the better runner, and they use both, John, and then occasionally, as we've said, they'll throw D. Brown in there, line him up either as an option quarterback or in the shotgun and run quarterback draw type of plays. You're right. You take a combination of the numbers. you got 13 touchdowns and only seven interceptions, but as you said, Williams likes to use the, utilize his athleticism on the corner and Troy Noons he has this capability from the pocket but more of the passer of the two it'll be third and a yard and a half with 938 left to go Paul Pasqualoni in his 14th year as the Syracuse head coach and it is D Brown who will line up as the quarterback and that usually means option Brown has 135 carries for 706 yards this year a 5.2 average most of that coming as the tailback, but as we said, occasionally he does line up as the quarterback. Uh, we were mentioning Paul Pasqualoni in the top 10 among active coaches and all-time victories. And Syracuse, one of, I believe it's only four or five schools, John, to have uh, 13 consecutive winning seasons they're working on right now. Yeah, they've done a great job up at Syracuse. A great home field advantage in that carrier dome, and really the team responds when they play at home. Very unusual for them to lose at home. Miami has a great opportunity today to try to bow up and really get into that situation that they want to get in, and that's the Gator Bowl if they win this game and then win next week. Well, with Pittsburgh losing today, Syracuse probably will be the fourth Big East team to go to a bowl. The Orangemen 
uh, whether they win or lose today, they have six victories, so they are bowl qualified. And they might be looking at the, with, a, with a loss to Miami at the Music City Bowl. Miami needs two wins, and they will go to the Gator Bowl, which would be a January 1st game. And as Richard Mercier said this week, hey, it's not one of the big four bowl games, but it is on New Year's Day, and I've never been, played in a New Year's Day game right. at the University of Miami. They've been to bowl games, but none on New Year's Day. Third and a yard and a half, full house backfield with D. Brown, the quarterback. Brown, pitches late, and down he goes. James Mungro just outside the end zone. I don't know. They're, They're going to mark it yeah. inside the one yard line. They're going to mark it inside the one. There was a little bit of a hesitation there. It looked like a great play, almost going for a safety, Frank, but they do mark it on the foot, on one foot line. A great defensive stand on third down by the Hurricanes. Let's take another look at the Hurricane defensive surge as Brown had nowhere to go. And eventually, William Joseph will come in and make the tackle on the running back. You yeah, you see, see the pressure by Lewis. Go ahead, John. Lewis did a great job forcing the pitch, and then big number 94, William Joseph, in for the uh, tackle for a loss on third down. A great defensive stand by the Hurricanes. Mike Schaefer to punt, standing at the back of his end zone. Santana Moss to receive for Miami. Good snap. Schaefer gets it away. Low line drive kick and they're going to stop play. Delay of game. Well, it really won't cost him any yardage, but you're going to force Schaefer to kick it again with his back right up against that end line. Well, that's a good play by Syracuse. You can't go any further back. You're trying to draw Miami off sides just so you can get another five yards. Usually the center and the punter are going to have 14 to 15 yards uh, to have a little bit of continuity in that punting game, but Miami this time shows some discipline and does not uh, fall for the trap. Look at James Kramer, Jack Kramer, excuse me, our referee. And that's going to cost Syracuse about three inches, I think, in penalty that's yardage. Right. But they will have to snap it again. Number 88, Mike Bennett, the number two tight end, is the deep snapper. Schaefer averaging 38.2 per kick. Reset clock, 8.50. Going to reset the game clock to 8.50. And right now, Frank, if you're Santana Moss and you're the lone receiver in this punt return, the last thing you want to do is let the punt hit the ground. You have to field it in the air. Mike Schaefer doesn't have a lot of room, nor does he have a lot of time to get this kick off. So Santana Moss, his main priority right now, even if you fair catch it, do not let the ball touch the ground. You want to keep the field position. This will be, I think, John, a field position type of game. You've got two good defenses going here, and field position is going to mean a lot. The referee blows the whistle, ready to play, and Schaefer will stand at the back of his end zone to kick it away. High snap, and yeah. it's a safety. Well, there's the value with the penalty. You make them do it all over again with a lot of pressure on, and Mike Bennett snapped it right out of the end zone. Miami gets on the board first with two points of safety there. A bad snap going right over Schaefer's head. Had no chance to come down with the football. And credit Miami on third down. That's what set up everything. They did a great job on third down. And here's the snap again. As you'll see, Schaefer has no chance to get this. Almost looked like it was intentional. To tell you the truth, Frank, he, he really didn't get off the ground. And it may have been intentional. Well, John, they have had problems with their deep snapping this year. Against Temple, Bennett snapped one over the punter's head against Rutgers a couple of weeks ago. The ball looked very slow getting back there to the punter, and it would seem to me that Miami's going to have an opportunity to make some plays on those special teams. You're looking at James Scott, number 19, a, kind of a handyman this year for Miami. He's played defensive back and has been a backup, moved to backup tailback when James Jackson's been hampered by the injuries, and Jackson was listed as questionable today, by the way, number 21, the Canes' top rusher, but hasn't seen action in the past two games. Now look at Butch Davis as his team will field now the free kick, and they go with the kickoff duo of Santana Moss and Aaron Mosier, and Nate Trout will use the tee and kick it from the 20. Most teams prefer to punt the free kick, but Syracuse will go with their kickoff guy, Nate Trout. Trout, by the way, from Merritt Island, Florida, and Syracuse, all they come down to Florida. They've got, I think, 13 or 14 players from the state of Florida, so it's a lot different than, than when I went to Syracuse uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> Uh, we didn't have the dome at that time, and uh, recruiting, you couldn't recruit 
real good guys, really. They got Penn State and Pittsburgh's leftovers at that point. But since the Carrier Dome and the facilities upgrade, Syracuse has been able to go out and recruit on a more national basis. And that's why they've been successful. Here's the kick from Trout. It's going to go to Santana Moss at his 17. Moss looking for an opening. Across the 30, dragged down at the 34-yard line. Will Allen, the cornerback, making the tackle, number 25. And Miami, with a 2-0 lead, will start first and 10 from their 34. That was great coverage by Will Allen. You saw the speed, the outside burst of Santana Moss, and that was a good job covering that kick. That's a tough kick to cover, and Syracuse did a great job, and Paul Pascaloni very happy with their coverage there. So they'll mark it at the 33-yard line, and that's where Ken Dorsey and the offense will take over with 8.37 left to go in the first quarter. And a baseball score on the board right now, 2-0 for the Hurricanes. Miami goes with the double tight end. Fulcher and Franks, Portis the only running back. Dorsey, he's going to go deep, looking for Santana Moss, incomplete at the 30-yard line. There was some contact there. Santana looking around for a flag, but... None is forthcoming. Quentin Harris and Will Allen had the double coverage for Syracuse. Quentin Harris staying at home at that free safety position. Did not bite on the play action to Portis from Ken Dorsey. Dorsey just tried to throw the football out and let Santana Moss use his speed to run under, but just out of the uh, reach of Santana Moss. Dorsey, three out of five, 23 yards so far. We've seen that in Ken Dorsey's brief time on the deep ball. Doesn't quite get enough air under it sometimes and lets his doesn't let his receiver quite run under it. On a second and 10, give us to Portis. Portis pops through the pile and will squeeze out a couple of yards. Number 90, Eric Downing, 6'3", 288 junior out of Patterson, New Jersey, will make the tackle. It'll bring up third and eight. Frank, so far this Miami offensive line really not establishing the line, the line or the line of scrimmage. You want to come out and you really want to attack that Syracuse defense. And right now, not a lot of running room for Clinton Portis so far early in the first quarter. Well, these defenses, as I said in the open, remarkably similar statistically. Both average giving up 114 yards on the game per ground, uh, per game on the ground. So they're a little bit in the stingy category. Not great, but pretty good against the run. Third and long for the Hurricanes, third and eight. Dorsey out of the shotgun and penalty flags fall and looks like we've got to delay a game. Delay, get the offense, five yard penalty, still third down. So that'll move it back five to the 30 yard line and bring up a third and 13. Not the kind of situation that you want to be in with Ken Dorsey a lot, John. Well, you know, Syracuse, they're going to come after Ken Dorsey a lot today. They, they did that on the last series. They really overloaded the strong side of the field and came after Ken Dorsey. They want to try to confuse the blocking schemes of Miami. Let's see what Syracuse does here on third down. They have a couple DBs in the football game, but I, I assume they will come with linebacker pressure. Third and long for Dorsey. Stays under center. Blitz coming. Dorsey deep for Santana Moss and incomplete at the 40-yard line of Syracuse. And again, Moss was double covered. Quentin Harris, number 29 back there, along with number 15, Willie Ford. That'll bring up a punting situation for Miami. And coming late on the blitz, Latroy Oliver, number three, and he'll get a shot at Dorsey. Yeah, that's a big shot on Ken Dorsey. You see Oliver coming in at the last second from the secondary, and Dorsey's gonna have to stand in and make those plays today if this offense is gonna move the football. Here's cap shot a punt. Quentin Spotwood. Takes it at the 24. Spotwood avoids the first wave and finally tripped up as he gets to the 30-yard line. Rod Mack, number 51, got a hand on him to force him down. There's a timeout on the field. 7.08 left to go in the first quarter. It's the Hurricanes 2 and Syracuse nothing. Log on to Sports Channel Florida for the best in Florida sports. Send email to your favorite announcers. Take part in interactive polls and chats and link to Florida's professional and collegiate teams. Log on now, sportschannelflorida.com. 7.08 left to go in the first quarter. Miami with a 2-0 lead, a safety on a bad snap on a punt attempt from the orange end zone. And Miami has that two-zip lead. A first and 10 Syracuse from their own 31-yard line. After a seven-yard punt return by Quentin Spotwood, and it appears Troy Noons, number 11, will return to the game to quarterback for the Orangemen. Syracuse with their standard personnel group, two wide receivers, now two tight ends, and just one running back. It is James Mungro, number 23. On first and 10 from the 31. 
That's Bennett in motion. Give us to Mungro. Mungro gets a couple of yards up to the 34 yard line before Nate Webster hits him and makes the tackle. Pickup was three and a half. Nate Webster, by the way, second team All-American this week, named by the Football News. And so well congrats, deserved. Congratulations to Nate, along with Richard Mercier, a second team selection, the offensive guard, and Bubba Franks, the tight end, a first team choice. Yeah, Nate leads the defense, 121 total tackles, 17 tackles for loss, and you couple that with four sacks, he's having a well of a season. Second and seven, Syracuse. Mungro and Johnson are the running backs behind Nunes. On the option. Nunes keeps it. Gets to the 40-yard line where Al Blades takes him down. It's going to be about a yard shy of a first down. Troy Nunes with his 66th rushing attempt of the season. And this time, uh, Webster got taken out of the play. Yeah, actually, on the uh, option, Syracuse trying to stretch the play there. You see number 32, Kyle Johnson, the fullback, getting to Nate Webster's legs, and that's what you want to do. You want to cut off the support help from the inside and let your quarterback and running back put pressure on the perimeter. Third and one for Syracuse. They go with the full house backfield, double tight end. And an unbalanced line to the right, Frank. Give us to D. Brown, puts his head down, gets across the 41, and should have enough for a first down, just barely. Matt Sweeney, number 98, gets up off the pile. He made the first contact for the Hurricanes, the senior out of Sussex, New Jersey, but the Orangemen pick up their initial first down of the game. And Frank, I agree with your assessment early in this football game. It's only 5.37 left to go in the first quarter, but I believe the team that makes the turnovers defensively, if they can cough up the football, make the other offense cough up the football and win with field position, it's going to be a, a tough, hard-nosed football game in the middle or the beginning of this game. As the defenses loosen up, whoever, whatever offense can control the football is going to win this game. They will measure for the first down, but from our vantage point, it appeared that D. Brown got the first, and he did by the length of the football. 5.37 left to go first quarter. Butch Davis's team with a 2-0 lead over Syracuse. The second safety of the year recorded by Miami. The other came against Florida A&M on a blocked punt by Aaron Mosier. Look at D. Brown, and it appears he might line up now as the quarterback. See, he's got the extra the wristband, wristband with yeah. the plays on it. You don't see tailbacks with that very often, but in D. Brown's case, when you're going to line up occasionally at quarterback, you need one. Three wide receivers in for Syracuse on a first and ten. Brown pitching to Mungro. Mungro got away from Reed and should have a first down inside yeah. Miami territory at the 48-yard line before he was ushered out of bounds. Al Blades had to make the tackle. That's, gr that's great speed at the quarterback position that time by D. Brown. He just gets the corner and a nice job downfield. Quentin Spotwood, number eight on Marquise Fitzgerald. Top of your screen. See the block right there? It stabilizes the corner and the pursuit cannot get there in time. You see Michael Rump, number eight, coming in to knock the running back out of bounds. But watch the corner. Great decision right there on Michael Burrow. Get the ball outside to Mungro and then it's all speed to the outside for the Orangemen. First and 10 from the Miami 48. Nunes gives to Mungro. Michael Burrow has him and will drop him after a gain of about three to the Miami 45 yard line. Michael Burrow coming off his best game against Rutgers last week. Made several tackles for loss. He has six tackles for loss on the season, three and a half sacks. And 22 quarterback hurries coming into the game. Big senior out of North Miami Beach. He and his wife, Batavia, became parents earlier this year. His daughter, Michaela, was born during the Florida State That's game. That's right. Call it a gain of three on first down. It'll be second and seven, Syracuse, just outside the Miami 45-yard line. 425 left to go first quarter. Frank Fort and John Congemi with you on Sports Channel. Troy Noons, the Syracuse quarterback. We have yet to see Madi Williams. Noons will throw for the first time. Under pressure. Noon slings it down the sideline. That ball is caught, but out of bounds. Going for Quinton Spotwood, Mike Rump had the coverage. And it'll bring up third and seven. That time, Troy Noon's really 
shuffling himself up into the pocket and found his favorite receiver, Quinton Spotwood, but he was out of bounds. He did a nice job of buying some time. It looked like a Miami defender was going to get to Troy Noons earlier. You see on the outside, great pressure by number 94, William Joseph. He almost gets there, but Noons does a nice job of throwing this football with authority. He just let his receiver out of bounds by about a foot and a half. That was a nice escape by the quarterback, Troy Noons. That's where he's most dangerous, scrambling around. Noons out of the shotgun on third and long. Noons to the sideline, and a nice catch by Woodcock. Pat Woodcock hauled it in at the Miami 32-yard line. Mike Rump, the closest hurricane, but that'll move the chains for the Orangemen. And early in this football game, Frank, the, the Orange offensive linemen are taking control of the line of scrimmage. They're doing a good job versus the blitz. Miami trying to bring pressure. It's man coverage just to the left side. Troy Noons delivers the football outside. You see Michael Rump gambling on the inside. That ball was put in the perfect spot to the outside and then great concentration by Pat Woodcock to come down and corral this football. Noons sees the pressure on the inside of his receiver. He throws the ball out and away from him and then great concentration by the receiver Woodcock. Double tight end, Mungro with the handoff and Damian Lewis puts the smack down on him, held him to a gain of a half yard. Big Damian Lewis, the junior, 6'3", 285, out of Sulphur Springs, Texas. 47 tackles this year, 11 for loss, and six and a half sacks, which is excellent for an inside defensive tackle. He did a nice job holding his ground that time. Damian Lewis, a big force inside at 285. He's only a junior, but the gain was really a, a short one. It'll bring up a second and nine. And D. Brown back under center as the quarterback. Full house backfield. Brown on an option. Good blocking, late pitch. And sliced down, number 34, Chris Davis. Number three running back, hit down by Dan Morgan at the Miami 26 or seven yard line. It'll bring up third and about four. Got some good blocking out front again, John. Yeah, terrific blocking on the option. If one thing that they do well is run the option and force the perimeter, you see D. Brown stretching it as far as he can. You see the pursuit coming from Miami. Dan Morgan securing the tackle on the running back Davis, but they're doing a good job of getting the corner and using their speed to the outside. Third and four for Syracuse. Noon's play action. Over the middle, complete to Woodcock, and he has a first down at the Miami 15-yard line. Nate Webster making the tackle, but with 2.03 left to go first quarter, Syracuse continues their march. Woodcock, two big receptions on this series of downs, one to the outside. This time, he just sat it down against the zone coverage. Easy pitch and catch for Troy Noons to the middle of the football field. Just a little play action. His receiver, Woodcock, just planting himself right where the linebacker should be. You see Nate Webster coming in to make the tackle, but not until the Orange have a first down. First and 10 from the Miami 15. Drive started at the Syracuse 31. Noons on the option. Pitches to Mungro. Mungro chopped down by Nate Webster as he reached the 11-yard line. And they'll mark it closer to the 10. Pickup was five. It'll be second and five for Syracuse. Frank, the one thing that Syracuse does well is they do pass off of the option. So the cornerbacks for Miami cannot commit to the run because as soon as they do, that receiver will just slip by the cornerback and run a route down the field. That's why you don't see the pressure coming from the corners. All the pursuit is coming from the inside. And you see the Syracuse coach saying, good job by Pat Woodcock. He was blocking on that particular play. Michael Rump down the field and did a good job. 12th play of the drive upcoming as D. Brown steps in at quarterback, but whistles blow and a timeout is being called. And I think it was called by Miami. They weren't sure what personnel package they wanted in the game. Dan Morgan had an equipment problem with his helmet and came off the field. Howard Clark came in to replace him and then Rod Mack, number 51, also came on the field. So Miami called the timeout. 33 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Syracuse threatening to take the lead. At the moment though, it's the Hurricanes two, the Orangemen nothing, back at the Orange Bowl in just a minute. It's remaining first quarter, Miami leading 2-0 on a safety over Syracuse, but the Orangemen with an 11-play, 59-yard drive going, facing a second and a short five inside the Miami 10. This drive has consumed six minutes and 35 seconds so far. It's D. Brown stepping into the quarterback spot now for Syracuse, with Davis, Johnson, and Mungro lined up behind him. 
Brown on the sprint out. Brown keeps. Brown slides down inside the five yard line. They're gonna mark him right at the five and that should be enough for a first down. So it'll be first and goal from the five. Nice job by D. Brown pinching in as the quarterback on the option to the wide side. Michael Burrow, he's up at the top of the left of your screen. You see he comes down inside. You want him to go outside so it forces D. Brown to, to cut up a little bit sooner where your pursuit is. That time D. Brown stretches the play to the outside and he's small enough at 5'10", 209. He's only a junior. He gets into the crease and it looked like he had enough yardage for a first down. He did indeed. Nate Webster given credit for the last tackle, but it's first and goal for Syracuse from the five-yard line. 12 plays so far on this drive. Two big completions to Pat Woodcock, keeping the drive alive. And Troy Noons coming back into the game at quarterback. As Miami bringing their goal line unit in, Ken Dangerfield, Rod Mack, Matt Walters all in there along with Adrian Wilson, number 96. 10 seconds left to go in the first quarter. And Adrian Wilson comes across and smacks the center and we'll see who this goes against. Only five seconds remaining in the first period of play. Clock stop for the penalty. Wyatt to the snap, offside, defense. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. <laughs> so again, Miami not disciplined enough on the interior, their second offside penalty. Adrian Wilson guilty of that, and they'll march it off to the two and a half. Yeah, both offensive, or both offsides penalties coming inside the 10 yard line, one at the one on the last possession. This time it comes around the eight yard line and it really causes Miami a lot of problems. We talked in the open, Frank, of the defense needed to be dominated. You see the penalties already in the first quarter, four penalties for 18 yards, but so far they have not been dominant. And we have reached the end of the first quarter. We'll change ends at the end of 15 minutes. It's Miami two, Syracuse nothing, but the Orangemen threatening back with second quarter action on Sports Channel right after this athletes by making a donation to the Hurricane Club. Every dollar raised goes toward the Student Athlete Scholarship Fund. Support Hurricane Athletics by making your donation today to the Hurricane Club at 305-284-6699 or 1-800-GO-CANES. We begin the second quarter at the Orange Bowl, Syracuse with a first and goal at the Miami two and a half. First quarter total plays Syracuse 15, 11 of those runs. Miami just nine offensive snaps in the first quarter as Syracuse has eaten up basically the entire second part of the first quarter with this drive, which started at their own 31-yard line. Nate Webster and company trying to figure out a way to keep Troy Noons and the Orangemen out of the end zone. But so far, a lot of success by Syracuse on this second possession with the option. And John, you said if Miami can't stop the option, then they're not going to win the football game. And that's exactly right. It doesn't matter who's playing quarterback, D. Brown, Matty Williams, or Troy Noons. If they can't stop the perimeter and Syracuse getting on Miami on the offensive line, they're not going to win this football game. Full house in the backfield behind Noons. Give us the Brown. Bounced off the pile, trying to get to the corner. Nate Webster drops him at the one yard line. Play probably should have lost yardage. Brown actually got a yard. Yeah, that's the great speed of, of Brown on the outside. D. Brown was banged up in the middle. Looked like he was gonna st be stopped for about a three or four yard loss. But Nate Webster bounces to the outside, finds the ball carrier for Syracuse, and then the speed of Nate Webster allows him to get there before he can get to the end zone. But a nice play by Brown and a better play by Webster. You see Burrow and Morgan on the inside really doing a good job on Kyle Johnson. And then you see the outside pursuit. You see Campbell in there as long, along with Ken Dangerfield, but they have to keep Syracuse out on second down. Second and goal. Three backs behind Nunes. Nunes gives to Kyle Johnson who walks in for the touchdown. Kyle Johnson, a 6'1", 241-pound junior from Woodbridge, New Jersey, his third rushing touchdown of the season, and Syracuse has the lead at 6'2". Yeah, really untouched. You see Kyle Johnson, number 32, going in for his third touchdown on the season for the Orangemen, and Miami's defense has to figure out how they can win the line of scrimmage because Kyle Johnson and Dee Brown are doing a good job right now of getting to the inside with Johnson and to the outside with Dee Brown. Nate Trout on to attempt the conversion as the Orangemen have jumped on top, six to two. Trout this year, 30 of 31 on point afters. 
Trout's kick is up and good. And with 14-11 left to go in the second quarter, Syracuse has grabbed a 7-2 lead. We'll be back with the kickoff by the Orangemen here at the Orange Bowl right after this here on Sports Channel. 14-11 left to go second quarter. The Orangemen on top 7-2 on a Kyle Johnson one-yard touchdown run. Johnson number 32 converting on a 14-play 69-yard drive and really just an easy walk in here. Yeah, no one touches him. You see Kyle Johnson goes in from the one-yard line, but Syracuse has done a nice job of controlling the line of scrimmage. They do it there on the inside, but on the on the perimeter, they've done a nice job. Look at the hole between Dan Morgan, 44, and the rest of the green jerseys to the inside. You could have fit three Orangemen in that hole, and, and really no one would have been touched. You see the drive, and it ate up seven minutes and 57 seconds. 11 of the 14 plays were running plays. But Miami has to stop the run against the Syracuse team. Did not do it on that drive. Here's Trout's kickoff. High and short. Moss will take it at the seven. To the 24 yard line, that's where Miami will start first and 10. David Tyree, number 81, making a second special teams tackle of the day for the Orangemen. So Ken Dorsey and company will come onto the field. And it's up to Miami to try and run the football a little bit, take a little pressure off Dorsey. So far, Miami, four rushes for zero yards total. There was a sack in there, which brought it down to zero. 23 yards passing. First and 10, Miami at their 24. Three-step drop, pass complete to Bubba Franks. Franks dragging Moreland Greenwood for what appears to be a first down up to the 35-yard line. Well, that's the way to get the big guy involved. That's right, get him on first down out in the flat. Miami tried to do that in the opening series, but actually number 52, Greenwood, the linebacker from Syracuse, held that to a minimal game of one yard. This time on first down, it's the quick slant and the combination, but Bubba gets some separation from the outside linebacker. You see the stiff arm right in Greenwood's face and just drags him towards the first down. On first and 10, Portis. Behind a Fulcher block, will get only a couple. Closing down quickly, Clifton Smith, a true freshman who's 6'2 and 250. He must have ate well in high school. He did. <laughs> he got to the table a couple times. You see big number nine there, Clifton Smith. They think that guy's gonna be a future star. Yeah, he's only a freshman, 6'2", as you said, Frank, and can run. He's gonna be a dominant linebacker in Syracuse. Second and eight, and Ken Dorsey wants a timeout. Confusion as to the personnel package on the field. And John, in game 11 of the season, this shouldn't be happening. Well, Frank, do you remember last week against Syracuse, the rhythm that Miami's offense started out the game with? They had a flow and they got it going. They built on that success early in the game. Today so far, it looks like Syracuse offensively has done a good job containing the pressure of Miami's defense. And now Miami on offense, conversely, cannot gain any momentum on that offensive line, it all starts up front. And if you can win up front, things are gonna get easier for Ken Dorsey as the game goes on. But you see a couple delay of penalty, uh, delay of game penalties on the offense. You see confusion with personnel. That does nothing but hamper an offensive success or offensive rhythm well, early in a game. I said it shouldn't be happening in game 11, but when you've got a freshman in there at quarterback and you saw him checking his wristband, and maybe he was confused about which formation they were supposed to be in or which personnel group they had on the field. And that can happen in the 11th game of a season when you've got your true freshman in there for a second start at quarterback. The broadcast rights to this telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by ESPN Regional solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, transmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of ESPN Regional or Sports Channel Florida is prohibited. Second and eight for Miami. They have spent two timeouts, one on defense, one on offense, so they have only one remaining. As you look at the Hurricane defense with uh, Greg Schiano down there somewhere in the middle of that huddle. You just see them with the headset between arms there. Trying to get the option defense straightened out. I think the biggest key is the defensive ends, Frank, right now. It looks like they're coming inside. If you notice Miami's defense throughout the season, they had a lot of times, we had a lot of width on our defensive front. Today, everybody's packed in, and, and Syracuse is doing a good job of getting the corner on Michael Burrow and William Joseph, and that allows D. Brown his speed to the outside, and Troy Noon's doing a good job of 
making a decision on the option, man, and they're getting uh, large chunks of yardage on that option to the outside. Syracuse had last week off. Two weeks ago, they lost to Rutgers in overtime. Impossible. And after watching Rutgers last week, you're at a loss to explain how that could possibly happen because Rutgers was just horrible last week. But this, I throw that result out the window. Syracuse just didn't come to play that day, and you and I both figured this was going to be a knockdown drag out here at the Orange Bowl today. Second and eight for Miami. Fake to Portis. Dorsey in trouble. Looking for Franks, has him at midfield. Franks still going down to the Syracuse 30 yard line. Clifton Smith finally had to make the tackle, but that is a pickup of 28 yards. I don't know how Ken Dorsey found Big Bubba Frank, six, six of them. You see double snowman, as you like to call him. He had a look entirely into the inside of this field. You see Bubba Franks to the left, never got across. He was collisioned by the linebacker. That really caused a bad timing, but Ken Dorsey, what a great athletic throw. Really throws it over his left shoulder. Did a great job of just getting the ball catchable to Bubba Franks and a big play for the Hurricane offense. First and 10 at the Syracuse 30. Dorsey, three-step drop, fade route, Andre King, out of bounds, incomplete. Willie Ford had the coverage on 84, Andre King. Well, Frank, as you mentioned earlier, the toughest throw that Ken Dorsey that we've seen in the last two weeks is going down the field. He's not putting enough air under the football, or he's not giving an, an opportunity for his receivers to go up and catch the football. Sometimes if you underthrow the ball just a touch on that, at least the receiver can go up and battle for the completion. Now Miami shows three wide receivers to the left or the top of your screen. Will McPartland, the only running back. Moss in motion. Dorsey, same play, and overthrows Reggie Wayne at the five-yard line. Again, Willie Ford had the coverage. So they must see something in Willie Ford where they think they can get him down the field, but Ken hasn't come close on those last two throws. No, he just hasn't let his receivers go up and make a play on the previous play. It was Andre King. Now you got Reggie Wayne to the outside. Man coverage. You just want to throw this football up around the numbers and let it drift towards the sidelines. That time it was uncatchable, and you see Reggie Wayne's disgust. He says, hey, just give me a chance to go up and compete for the football. Third and 10 from the Syracuse 30. This is a strange formation. Three wide receivers to the short side of the field. And now Syracuse, I think, is going to call timeout. They didn't know what that formation was about because I guarantee you we haven't seen it this year. No, we have not. It was almost a reversal of what they did the previous play. That time they put Tripp's formation into the boundary and they motioned Will McPartland toward the wide side. And Syracuse did a good job of they were completely out of position. They wanted to call a timeout and come over and talk about it. You see Coach Pascaloni calling Keith Bullock over to the sideline. They want to get it squared away in case they see that formation again. Yeah, we have not seen, we've seen trips from Miami, but never to the boundary side of the field with the ball on that hash mark and three wide receivers outside on that particular side of the formation. So that is a little wrinkle that Miami has thrown in for this game. We mentioned McPartland, Will McPartland, number 35, who uh, sat out last week with a concussion, is back in there today. Good to see Will back in the lineup. Let's take a look at the Big East right now. Of course, Virginia Tech going to play for the national championship. Miami right now in second place. And, John, my opinion is Virginia Tech clearly is the best team in the league. Rutgers clearly is the worst team in the league. Those other six teams, you can kind of throw them into a pillowcase and shake it up, and you're not sure who's going to fall out. Today's an opportunity for Miami to be that team that falls out of the pillowcase. You're exactly right. You never know what's going to happen with those teams. You know, West Virginia today put a beating on Pittsburgh at home in their final game of the season so you know you have a lot of those teams in there that if they rise to the occasion on that given day they're going to win those football games and Miami's especially one of those temperamental teams you never know what's going to happen and you have a freshman starting his second ball game in Ken Dorsey you have a veteran offensive line but they're combating a Syracuse defense today that is playing you know their A game they brought their A game to the table so far in this first quarter with 12:33 left to go and Paul Pascaloni has to like his chances in this football game. Syracuse has lost four times. Miami's lost four times. Of course, everybody, you know who Miami's lost to. Syracuse has lost to Michigan by five, 62 to nothing at Virginia Tech, to Boston College by one, and to Rutgers by a field goal in overtime. Twelve thirty-three left to go second quarter. A good close look at Ken Dorsey, the true freshman from Orinda, California. 
A lot riding on this young kid's shoulders. Well, he's getting man coverage again across the board. You see Bubba Frank shifting to the short side. Out of the shotgun on third and 10. Syracuse coming with a blitz. Same play, going for Wayne, and he cut the pattern short, and the ball falls incomplete. Willie Ford again had the coverage. Well, I don't know what they see in Willie Ford, but he's been sticking with the receivers on that side of the field. I'm not quite sure why Ken is, it's the hardest throw in football from one hash to the outside on a fade route to the wide side. You have to be so accurate, but all three balls have gone out of bounds, and that time you see Reggie Wayne going on the comeback route. Just miscommunication from quarterback to wide receiver. So Andy Crossland will line up a 47-yard field goal try. This would match his season high. Snap is good. Popovich puts it down. Crossland's kick has enough distance, but missed it wide to the left. The 12-23 left to go in the second quarter. Syracuse will take over at their 30-yard line. Well, Frank, that's an opportunity for your special teams, and especially Crossland, to come through and put some points on the scoreboard. And that's not just happened once or twice this season. You have to come through when your number's called, just like the quarterback does and the running back and the linebacker and the defensive back. Andy Crossland has not come through enough for this football team this year. 12 out of 19 now on field goal attempts. Take another look at the field goal try. Appeared to be a good snap and hold and just didn't come through the football enough. Yeah, those balls usually try to drift back towards the middle of the goal post. That one really just stayed out beyond the left upright. First and 10 Syracuse at their 30. D. Brown the quarterback with three wideouts in the formation. Brown gives to Sedano the fullback and he's taken down by Al Blades after a gain of two. Good run support by the safety Al Blades, the junior out of Plantation, Florida. Yeah, all 6'2", 200 pounds of the junior. Free safety, that time playing close to the line of scrimmage, came up and filled the hole very nicely. Second down and eight upcoming from the 32-yard line. 12 minutes exactly to go as you get a look at Al Blades. Overcame a serious knee injury during his freshman year. And now the officials have stopped play once again. The clock continues to run on the uh, big scoreboard, Frank. Well, it should run. The play was within the field of play. It didn't go out of bounds. And we're not sure what exactly this discussion is about. Play clock is at 19, so there didn't seem to be a problem there. Of course, as you know, I'm not a big fan of Big East officiating, but let's just leave it at that. Uh, it's, yeah. the, it's the holiday season, and I'm being <laughs> charitable. Yay. They're going to reset the 25-second clock. Please reset the game clock, 12.05. All right, they want the game clock reset to 12.05. Why, I'm not sure. There's no reason for the clock to have stopped. Well, they wanted to stop the clock on the field, and I guess that's the reason why they're going to move it back to 12.05. But you're right, Frank, there was no penalties. There were nothing uh, to stop the play. There was a running play. Today, Jack, while we're young. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Paul Pasqualoni Paul doesn't about understand it either. Yeah. So you're giving us the full 25. You're sure they're not starting the play clock at 20? All right, now we're getting rolling again. And the clock will count down from 12.05. Second and eight for Syracuse. D. Brown remains the quarterback. Sedano and Mungro, the running backs behind him. Brown pitches to Mungro. Mungro taken down by Dan Morgan and Al Blades, and they'll mark him at the 30, almost to the 39-yard line. Be about a yard and a half shy of a first down. Frank, really the option play so far has negated Miami's team speed on defense. They cannot stop Syracuse from getting the perimeter on the corner. You see at the point of attack, 94, he's, uh, William Joseph always running from inside out, never getting the corner and collapsing the tackle. You see Al Blades and Dan Morgan in on the tackle, but not until the game sets up a third and one. Troy Noon's back in at quarterback. Three running backs behind him, double tight end. Noons on the option. Noons tripped up and down he goes for a loss. Michael Burrow back to the 32-yard line, and that'll bring up a punting situation. That time the team speed was there and the pursuit was there. Big number 93, Michael Burrow did a nice job of capturing Troy Noons, and they didn't get the corner. I think the option looks better with D. Brown 
getting the speed to the outside. This time, Miami, the pursuit, you see number 92, Damian Lewis, 44, Dan Morgan. You see big number 93, Michael Perot in on the tackle, Matt Sweeney. They do not get the corner, and I think it's better with D. Brown on the Syracuse perspective to get the corner than Troy Nunes on the option. Fourth and six, Schaefer to punt, Santana Moss to receive it for Miami. by Ed Reed. Edward Reed got his hands on it. Miami players say, run away from it, run away. And then Miami will take over at the Syracuse 34 yard line. Well, John, as I mentioned, that snap looks a little slow getting back to the punter. And Ed Reed came right up the middle and blocked it. Well, Frank, you said that Miami was gonna get a punt today and that's exactly what happened, Ed Reed does a nice job coming from the right side of your screen. You see right there, he splits the defenders and let, lays wide out to get the ball. You see Outblade, stay away, everybody get away. And that's a great job by the Miami special teams. The punt block unit did a great job. Edward Reed turns his shoulders and then flattens out and goes for the football. He did a great job getting to the football. That's his second block of the season. 10.41 left to go second quarter. Hurricanes trying to take advantage of a break. Dorsey on a rollout. Plenty of time. Finds a tight end, Bubba Franks. Bubba tripped up as he got down to the 27 yard line. Vernon Banks, the outside linebacker, making the tackle. Another look at Edward Reed on the sideline, the sophomore out of St. Rose, Louisiana. He's a big play type of guy. Maybe not as consistent as the coaches would like at this point in his career, he's still young, but definitely a big play type of player. Gain was six on the last play down to the 28 of Syracuse on the completion of Frank, second and four. This is Jared Payton. Payton cuts back inside and gets down to the 18 yard line and that will be a Miami first down. Eric Downing, number 90, forced to make the tackle, but with 9.54 left to go in the second quarter, Miami is in the red zone. That's what Miami has to do. They have to attack north and south against Syracuse and really Get, get aggressive with their running game. Go right at Syracuse, and that's exactly what happened here. Peyton does a nice job of setting up his blocks. You see him go inside of Joaquin Gonzalez. Bubba Franks pushing uh, Greenwood down the field, the linebacker, but a nice initial run by Jared Peyton. Gain was 10. Peyton again. Peyton 15 and tripped up as he got to the 12-yard line. He might have gone had he not lost his balance. Yeah, great balance on the inside to get through the line of scrimmage, and then he loses it when he comes out of the backside, but Jared Payton, very impressive on his first two runs of the afternoon. You look at his numbers so far in this season, which of course has seen a great deal of personal anguish for Jared with the passing of his father, Walter, but a great moment last week when he scored against Rutgers. In there now, giving Clinton Portis a breather. Second and five for the Hurricanes. Again, it's Payton. Peyton hauled down just about at the line of scrimmage, maybe got a yard. Donald Dinkins and Moreland Greenwood in on the tackle for the Orangemen. Frank, very important for the University of Miami to get six, get seven points out of this opportunity that the punt block presented them. They can't go away with a field goal here. They have to take advantage of their opportunities. They have the ball third down right around the 11 yard line. They have to convert on third down, but they have to get in the end zone on this series. They have a third and three from the Syracuse 11. Dorsey will throw it. Pass was tipped and incomplete. Tipped at the line of scrimmage. It looked like he had Fulcher open on the hash mark. We had Bubba Franks and Mondrell Fulcher wide open on a play that they ran on numerous occasions last week against Rutgers and you see the display you hear the displeasure of the fans they want him to go for it but this is the what you have to do you have to take the points while you have the opportunity and Andy Crossland is going to be called again to convert on a field goal this will come from 29 yards away out of the hold of Jeff Popovich Crossland's kick is up and it's no good wide right well we've seen Andy Crossland before in big games come up empty and he has done so twice today eight minutes 12 seconds left to go second quarter it remains Syracuse 7 Miami 2 the missed field goals from Andy Crossland here in the second quarter one from 47 and one from 29 and 
John, especially after the block punt. Like you said, you've got to come away with some points. And the fans were screaming to go for it on fourth and three. And, of course, in hindsight, they're right. But, you know, you want to get points out of it. You've got to figure your field goal kicker can make a 29-yarder. But that kick just had no prayer. Well, it had no chance. And Miami, in the last two drives, they started on their own 24. And they went seven plays, 46 yards. They miss a 48-yarder. And now they start at the Syracuse 34 compliments of the block punt they go six plays for 23 yards and miss a 29 yarder so not taking advantage of the opportunities and the field position presented by the special teams in the defense they're going to have to crawl out of a hole again with 8 12 left to go before halftime troy noons is the quarterback d brown the lone running back noons with play action chased by joseph throws it incomplete dropped by his tight end mike bennett Dan Morgan out there on the coverage. Good pressure by William Joseph, refused to allow Nunes to turn the corner. Yeah, I think that was the key. William Joseph did a nice job of holding his ground on the quarterback, Troy Nunes. And I think if I'm Syracuse, I don't want to take D. Brown out of the quarterback spot. I want to let him run the option and go ahead and, and run the offense because right now that's the play that has the Miami defense most concerned. Troy Nunes looks a little bit shaky. He has a little bit of his feet are going all over the place in the pocket. And sometimes uh, D. Brown is... Uh, utilizing his speed to the outside. On second and 10, Noons from the Syracuse 20. Gives it to D. Brown, and Dan Morgan has him. Maybe got a half a yard. Dan Morgan, 108 total tackles coming into the game, 13 of those for losses, four and a half sacks for the junior from Coral Springs. Yeah, terrific linebacker. You talk about Nate Webster with All-American honors. Dan Morgan, not far behind at 6'3", 225 pounds. He does a great job of using his size and speed to go ahead and bring down D. Brown, a tough open field tackle for Dan Morgan to make. You see, he fights the block off of the offensive lineman, does a great job getting off of P.J. Alexander, the center, and makes a big play for the Hurricane defense. Third and nine for Syracuse. Miami on a blitz. Noon standing in there, flagged down. Long pass for Woodcock, he's got it. And Woodcock will go all the way, but there is a penalty flag back in the Syracuse backfield. It looked like Miami defender was held way back around the 20-yard line. I'm not sure if that's the call, but it looked like someone was tackled at the line of scrimmage. That's exactly what it was, John. You saw our referee, Jack Kramer, indicate the hold. Well, Miami sold out on that one. Syracuse did a good job picking it up, a little too good of a job, but somebody got tackled and it negates a 79-yard touchdown play. Let's take one more look at it on the inside. Holding against the offense, 10-yard penalty, previous spot, repeat, third down. Take a look at number 69, P.J. Alexander, the backup center on 92, Damian Lewis. Yeah, and it's a WWF takedown as well. You see right there, he just grabs a hold of him, almost not as bad as it looked from up here, but he did get that left arm, I think, around Damian Lewis's left arm and just hogtied him from behind, and that really nullifies a 79-yard play, 79-pass yard play down the sideline. Alexander, P.J. Alexander, the play before, trying to block Dan Morgan unsuccessfully. Now he gets caught for the hold in the middle of the Syracuse offensive line. So it'll make it third and 19. Disturbing thing about that is Leonard Myers, who's had such an up and down season, again, beaten so badly on that type of play. And now another timeout called by Syracuse. That is their final timeout of this first half. 7.14 left to go in the second quarter. It's the Orangemen seven, Miami two in a defensive battle from the Orange Bowl. We'll be back on Sports Channel right after this. Join UM coaches, players, and fans each Friday prior to every home game for a preview of the upcoming opponent. Breakfasts are held in date at the Hecht Athletic Center and luncheons in Broward at the Mike High Restaurant in Fort Lauderdale. To reserve your spot, contact the Hurricane Club at 305-284-6699. Third and 19 for the Orangemen with 7.14 left to go second quarter. Syracuse with three wide receivers in the formation. Troy Noon's the quarterback, Rominski the tight end in motion. Noon's under pressure, swings it out, complete to D. Brown at the five. Brown trying to get to the outside and he'll get to the 15 yard line, but that is still well short of a first down. Troy Noon's a little bit gingerly getting up there as he took a shot. That was a big play from the backside by number 20, Edward Reed coming and he was the guy that actually 
got a hold of Troy Nunes right at the goal line. Looked like it was going to be another safety for the Miami defense. Take a look, Edward Reed right there on D. Brown. I don't know how Troy Nunes gets rid of this football, even close to D. Brown, but it didn't, wasn't enough for the first down. Here's Schaefer's kick to Santana Moss. He's got a wall. Midfield, 40. There goes Santana down the sideline. Cuts back inside, and Santana Moss will house it for the second week in a row. This time, a 61-yard punt return. And boy, is this guy lightning in a bottle. What great blocks by the special team so far for Miami. It's all special teams. Edward Reed blocks a punt to try to get the spark united for, for the University of Miami. This time, it's big number six, the big little man going coast to coast. Santana Moss, as you said, Frank, for the second consecutive week, gets into the end zone for a special teams touchdown. Number 23, James Lewis. Make it 27, Marquise Fitzgerald being assisted to the sideline for Miami. And it appears that Miami will go for two. With the score 8-7. And now guys late getting onto the field, they're probably gonna have to spend a timeout. They have one left. Playcock is already down to 12. And Syracuse making a late change as well. They're not ready. Snap the football. Throw it out to your wide receiver. Oh, you should have snapped it and thrown it out, John. You mentioned it. The guys at the top of the screen were uncovered. But you know what? A year from now or maybe two years from now, Ken Dorsey will have enough experience to, to know to do that. Right now, he's still a little bit shy or uncertain of what he's doing. Let's take one more look at this punt return, and boy, was it set up beautifully. Well, it was electrifying. Great blocks there. You see Nick Ward, number three, a nice block. You see Aaron Mosier with a nice block, and then a great cutback here on the kicker. You see great blocks there again by number 20, Edward Reed, but Santana Moss, is he exciting or white when he has some room to run, and he follows the wall. The wall was set up beautifully, and then a nice cutback. The last cutback, he goes untouched for the Hurricane touchdown. 61 yards for the touchdown. Let's flash back now to a week ago against Rutgers, and this one was right up the middle for 67 yards. Yeah, when, what great speed he has in the open field, and he has electrifying moves. When he has you with a little bit of space, he can make you look foolish, and Santana Moss does a terrific job providing the spark that this offense needs. Well, John, you were mentioning during the last time out, didn't seem to be a, a lot of emotion from Miami, which we've seen them this year. That's been almost typical of them in the Boston College game, the West Virginia game, even the Pittsburgh game to a certain extent. And they needed a big play to get them going. And maybe part of it had to be with the missed field goals. That can take a little bit of life out of a team. But Santana Moss has brought some life back. All right, so Miami with an 8-7 lead will now go for two. Still waiting for our referee, Jack Kramer, to signal the ball, signal the ball ready for play. Which he does now. Will McPartland is the only running back. Three wideouts in for the Hurricanes. Dorsey, over the middle, caught, two-point conversion to Andre King. And Miami leads it 10-7. Frank, very similar play. I believe it was last year against West Virginia that Daryl Jones catches for a touchdown. It looked like the exact same play, different receiver with number 84, Andre King, coming in with short motion across the middle. Ken Dorsey finds him, and it's, and it's good for the two-point conversion. Another look at the two-point play for Miami. Watch from the right-hand side of your screen. Bubba Franks goes to the outside, and then Andre King replaces him to the inside, finds a soft spot in that zone, just settles down and secures the catch. A good throw by Ken Dorsey. The last one was batted down when they got in scoring position. position. This time, he threads it through the needle and gets the two-point conversion. With 6.26 left to go in the second quarter, Miami has regained the lead at 10-7. Bright Saturday afternoon at the Orange Bowl, Miami trying to pick up a win which would qualify them for bowl consideration. And they have already been told that if they win this game and if they win next week against Temple, the Gator Bowl will invite them against a number two selection from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Butch Davis and his guys on the sideline, Andre King, might be calling the wife at this point. <laughs> Did you see me? Check me out, I'm doing all right. Andre, one of the few Hurricanes who are married. Of course, he uh, spent five years in the Atlanta Braves system as a baseball player, but uh, I think Uncle Charlie, the deuce, might have ended that. Might have, hey, it ended a lot of careers, let Andre, me tell you. Andre had a little trouble with the breaking ball, so he decided to cast his lot with football. Of course, he was a standout football player at Stranahan High School in Fort Lauderdale. 
Andy Crossan will kick it off. Will Allen, the deep man for Syracuse. Allen at the six. Tripped up, a nice tackle by James Lewis, number 23, spinning Allen down at the 27-yard line. That's where the Orange will start first and 10. Look at James Lewis, excellent special teams player, the sophomore out of Piscataway, New Jersey. Comes down with a lot of speed, big number 23. You see he has 28 total tackles on the season. And Allen had a little bit of a crease. That was a big play by James Lewis to come back and try to stop Syracuse around the 20 yard line. They let him get to the 20, I believe the 28 yard line. Well, they'll start first and 10. You are correct, sir. James Lewis grew up within sight of the Rutgers campus, but came to South Florida to play for the Hurricanes. It's D Brown at quarterback with a full contingent of running backs behind him. Brown keeping the football. Tripped up by Reed and then Campbell finishes him at the 37 yard line. They're gonna make Miami stop this option one way or the other. And they're gonna make him stop it with D Brown at quarterback. I think that gives him the best opportunity because of his elusiveness and his speed and size. He can make himself small. Check him out in the middle of the field here. He does a great job running in between the tackles. Ed Reed gets an arm tackle on him and you see number 48 Chris Campbell to try to complement the tackle. But D Brown doing a nice job at the quarterback position. Second and one. Brown gives the Sedano his fullback, who has a first down and a lot more. Nick Sedano into Miami territory at the 34-yard line before he is finally hauled down. Nick Sedano doesn't carry it a ton. That's only his 11th carry of the year, and that may have exceeded his yearly yardage. 29 yards is two more than he had all season. Yeah, that's just demoralizing to a defense. Just a plain dive play straight ahead. But Miami cannot get off any of the Syracuse blocks. And now it's a foot race. Sudano's not going to win that, but he carries Miami defenders all the way to the 34-yard line. First down, Orangeman. Brown again. Keeps the football, cuts back inside. Nate Webster grabs him and brings him down at the 28 yard line, but a pickup of five by D Brown. Frank, I have to agree with the Syracuse strategy on offense. This is the only way that Miami has not been able to stop this offense is with D Brown at quarterback and they're getting the corner at will on the option play. And you see Miami and Nate Webster breathing a little heavy there and Paul Pascaloni asking some of the officials to watch the, whole, watch the defense there. He can't believe what he's seeing. I'm not sure what that is, but I don't think he's happy about it. Paul's never happy about anything. No. Second and five from the Miami 28. Brown gave it to the fullback. Kyle Johnson hit hard by Webster and then finished off by Andre Wil uh, Adrian Wilson. The gain was two. It'll bring up third and about two and a half. Big hit by Nate Webster, although he could not wrap him up after the collision. Yeah, huge hit in the middle. No hesitation this time by Nate Webster. He beats the block of Mark Banowitz, the left tackle, and does a nice job with the initial hit, but can't wrap up the big fullback from Syracuse. Third and close to three. Noons now in a quarterback. Noons play action. Pass too low intended for Johnson who was well covered at the Miami 28 yard line. Mike Rumpf up there in coverage, the sophomore cornerback. Nice job in coverage that time by Miami. They weren't fooled by the play action and the pass to Kyle Johnson never got above his shoestrings from Troy Noons. So that will bring out Nate Trout to attempt the field goal with Noons holding. This will come from the 34 yard line, a 44 yard attempt. Three minutes, 40 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. This to tie the football game. Snap is good. Noons puts it down for Trout. His kick on the way, and it is no good. Nate Trout failing from 44 yards away, so the field goal kickers in this game are 0 for 3. And Miami keeps their lead at 10 to 7. Yeah, Trout, thankfully for the UM fans, returns the favor that Andy Crossland gave the Syracuse fans. That ball just stays outside the right upright. Looks like it's going to hook in right there, but it just stays outside. And thankfully for the Miami defense, they put up a nice stand there right around the 30, 
around the 28-yard line, and Nate Trout does not convert for the Syracuse Orangemen. Injury update for the Hurricanes. Cornerback Mar uh, Marquise Fitzgerald has a sprained ankle. His status to return is unknown at this time. So that means Leonard Myers will see a lot of action at corner. Hurricanes, first and 10 at their 27. Fake to Portis. Dorsey. Cut by Moss at the 47-yard line, and he got a foot down. Oh, that's a big-time play by Santana Moss. And a big-time play by Ken Dorsey. Who said the 6'5 freshman can't throw on the run? That's twice he's found Bubba Franks over the middle of the football field. This time he finds his wide receiver. And what a great job of putting the football with some zip on it to the outside. He was under duress, you see there. But what a great spot of this football. Throws it to the outside. Rolling Santana Moss can make a play on it. And alertly, Santana gets the foot down inbounds. First and 10, Miami, 3.28 to go second quarter. From the Hurricane, 47. Give us to Portis. Midfield, Syracuse territory to nearly the 45-yard line. Quentin Harris, the safety, had to make the tackle as Portis picked up seven yards on the first down. That was a nice job at the point of attack by Joaquin Gonzalez. He did a great job on Dwight Freeney, the backup defensive lineman and Clinton Portis did a good job of staying on the hole he fought and he looked around he didn't see any daylight but kept it going north and south for a nice gain on first down second and three Miami in Syracuse territory at the 46 just one wide receiver in it's Andre King to the top of the screen Portis again behind Mercier good block Portis 35-30 and Clinton finally shoved out of bounds by Ian McIntosh at the Syracuse 17 yard line. Clinton Portis with a 29 yard gain. Frank, for whatever reason, this Miami team is, is better adjusted and better suited for quicker hitting plays into the short side of the field. And Clinton Portis saw the hole, he never hesitated. Great job by Mondrell Fulcher outside. You see the fullback there, Will McPartland does a great job of kicking it out. And now it's all speed to the outside. Yes, Syracuse and Ian McIntosh has the angle, but a nice play by Clinton Portis of never hesitating to the hole. Let me correct my arithmetic, the gain was 20. This is Portis again. Portis tripped up as he gets to the 15 and a flag down. Clifton Smith made the play, but this will probably be a hold on Miami. Just not a good idea on a first and 10 from the 17 yard line. It looked like they may have caught Mondrell Fulcher on the end of the line of scrimmage that time with the hold. Never a hesitation by the, uh, the referee to throw the flag. Holding against the offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat, first down. I am told by our statistician that it was indeed a 29 yard run by Clint Portis, so my brain was working properly the first time. I never doubted you, Frank. Okay, well, I'm getting a little older, so sometimes <laughs> I question myself. 2.31 left to go here in this second quarter. Miami with a 10-7 lead. The penalty will bring it back to the 25-yard line from the spot of the foul, so it's first and 18. Three wideouts in for Miami. That's Moss in motion. Dorsey delivers to Moss. And he is shoved out of bounds at the Syracuse 17-yard line back to the original line of scrimmage. Willie Ford making the tackle. It's a great little wrinkle they put in. Normally you have Mondrell Fulcher and Bubba Franks running this route. This time Moss comes across the formation. He takes the place of Mondrell Fulcher. Usually he goes in, but he spins back out. A nice little fin move, as you would call it, back to the outside. And that's a nice little wrinkle by Larry Coker and, and the rest of that offensive staff. Moss will go in a slot left with Reggie Wayne outside him to the top of the screen on a second and 10 after the pickup of eight on first down after the holding penalty. Man-to-man -man coverage to the top, Frank. Look for an inside route, Santana Moss. Blitz coming, Dorsey steps in. Wayne, corner, touchdown Miami! Well that time, Ken Dorsey put it on the money. And that time he gave his receiver a chance to make the play on the catch. You see big number 87, Reggie Wayne. He goes in for his third touchdown of the season, but credit Ken Dorsey from learning from his prior mistakes, his previous mistakes. That time he keeps the ball in bounds and lets his receiver go up for the touchdown. 2.06 left to go in the second quarter. Miami has extended the lead to 16 to seven. Reggie Wayne with his third touchdown of the season. And now Andy Crossland on to attempt the conversion out of the hold of Jeff Popovich. Snap by Pat Del Vecchio is good, and this time Crossland finds 
the middle of the uprights and gets a bit of a derisive cheer from the crowd. But with 2.06 left to go in the second quarter, it's the Hurricane 17, Syracuse 7. Another look at the fade route to Reggie Wayne. Frank, I thought they may go to Santana Moss because Ken Dorsey had had trouble throwing the fade route. This time they stick with it in, in regards. This time the fourth time is a charm. A little push off on the outside on Willie For Ford's shoulder. But Reggie Wayne does a nice job and so does Ken Dorsey. He gives him an opportunity to stop for the football. Frank, we had mentioned earlier, sometimes the throw behind on the fade is the best way to do it because the cornerback never turns. Let's see if Willie Ford ever turns around to take a look at the football, not until it's by him, and that allows Reggie Wayne to stop, go up and get the football for the touchdown, and it makes the young quarterback real happy to convert that time on the fade route for six. Ken Dorsey, the true freshman, and as I mentioned, you know, a lot of pressure on this kid coming in to replace Kenny Kelly when Miami needs wins to get into the postseason. They can't win the conference championship, but they can go to a very good bowl game in the Gator Bowl. It's one of the, you know, it's of the second tier bowls. If it's not the big four, that's one of the better bowl games. You see uh, Moss and Wayne on the phone upstairs to Larry Coker and Curtis Johnson, the receivers coach. And Miami's offense finally gets to the end zone. Santana Moss scored the other touchdown on the punt return. And that seemed to really spark this Miami team. And you, you hate to bring back some bad memories, but it is 17 to seven, but just take a look. Even if you take one of those field goals, it gives you a little bit of a cushion. Now Miami still has to play tough defense, get the football back, but at least keep Syracuse out of the end zone. Crossland's kick goes out of bounds, so Syracuse will start at the 35 yard line and Andy's hearing it from the crowd. And he has been really good kicking off this year. That probably has been his strength. Yeah, that's the one thing he has done well is, is use his strength on the kickoffs, but that's really inexcusable. You can't give instant field position to Syracuse, uh, you know, without them really doing anything on special teams, and that's exactly what the Miami Hurricanes have done, and Andy Crossland kicking it out of bounds at the 35-yard line. 2.01 left to go in the second quarter. It's 17 Miami, 7 Syracuse. Troy Noons is the quarterback. Syracuse does not have any timeouts left, neither does Miami for that matter. Frank, you look for the, the fake of the option and the pass off of the option right here with Troy Noons at quarterback. Noons faking, rolling out of the pocket, under pressure, throws back the other way to Spotwood at the 40, and he'll get out of bounds. Noons is passed. After a gain of about four yards, maybe five. Chris Campbell ran him out. And Leonard Myers on the play, actually coming on the blitz. Looks like he's limping to the outside. We already have Marquise Fitzgerald, it looks like, out of the football game. So that may be a, a very dangerous on the corner for the University of Miami. Philip Buchanan, number 31, the true freshman, will come in as Myers seems to have a calf problem. Was he coming on a blitz there, John? Yeah, he was coming on the backside blitz from the short side and never could get to Troy Noons. Noons did a nice job of finding his receiver, Quentin Spotwood, in the middle, but... Uh, Two injuries at the same position could hurt Miami. Leonard Myers, the junior out of Dillard High School in Fort Lauderdale. Scott McGonigal, the trainer, looking at the left ankle. So a tough situation for Philip Buchanan, number 31. 5'11", 175-pound freshman from Lehigh, Florida. As you look at Myers' pertinent numbers. Well, Philip Buchanan's going to have to step up and play bigger than his size at 5'11", 175. He's only a freshman, 11 total tackles, one breakup, and one forced fumble on the season. So he's going to be called upon out on that island on the cornerback position to come up big for this defense. He's not completely inexperienced. He's played a lot in the dime package for the Hurricanes. And actually Nick Ward into the football game as well. As Miami goes with the uh, dime defensive package, six DBs in the game. Noons out of the shotgun. Shovel pass to Brown. Brown breaking free. And Al Blades made the tackle despite losing his helmet at the Hurricane 46-yard line, but that is a first down. And Syracuse will go without a huddle, Frank. They have no timeouts remaining. The clock will stop for the chains, but a minute 45 left to go before halftime. Pickup was 13 on the shovel pass. Noons again out of the shotgun. That's motion. And that is a penalty flags, as you mentioned, flying. My quarterback partner has a sharp eye. Sometimes. Here's Jack Kramer. Quiet to the snap. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still, first down. 
Leonard Myers returning to the football game for Miami, and Nick Ward comes out. Quincy Hips in for pass rushing purposes, number 90, replacing William Joseph. Well, hopefully, clock moving, I'm sorry, John, clock moving with a minute 33. Frank, hopefully that wasn't an ankle injury. It was only a cramp. Out of the shotgun, Nunes. Back across the middle, incomplete. Going for D. Brown. At the Miami 45, that'll bring up a second and 15. Right now, Syracuse doesn't scare me throwing the football down the field, Frank. They, they really scare me if they can get into this football game and get a score before halftime. That way they can go back to D. Brown, run in the option and control the Miami defense and control time of possession and move the chains that way. You see yards by the quarter, Syracuse 80 in the second quarter, but Miami really turning it on Syracuse in the second quarter, 132 yards by the Miami offense. Second and 15. Spotwood in motion across the formation. Noons with a fake. Under pressure, across the middle, broken up by Al Blades and falls incomplete. Al Blades with a nice play defensively. A great play by the freshman, Jamal Green as well, coming up through the middle, forcing Troy Noons to throw that football up high over the middle. And as you said, Al Blades coming up with a big play out of the secondary, but Jamal Green used his strength. I'm not sure if he wasn't held coming up the middle. Take a look at 55. He just does an, a loop coming from outside to inside. He does a nice job of making Troy Noons throw that football while he was drifting in the pocket, and that started the confusion in the Miami secondary. Woodcock was the intended receiver. Third and 15. Noons with a blitz coming. Noons got away from Al Blades. Around Jamal Green. Throws, and that's intercepted by Myers. Leonard Myers back he down can the sideline. And Leonard Myers is going to take it to the house. Oh, baby, Leonard Myers with a minute to go in the second quarter. And that ankle feels a whole lot better. And so does Butch Davis and the entire Miami crowd here at the Orange Bowl. He stepped right in front of that Troy Noons pass. I told you, Frank, the Syracuse offensive pass game does not scare you, and especially with Troy Noons running for his life, throwing the football up for grabs on the sideline. He'd been better off of throwing that one away trying to make a play, and Leonard Myers, the junior out of Dillard High School, steps in front of the would-be Syracuse receiver and takes it in for a Miami touchdown. Third interception of the year for Leonard Myers, and it comes at a very opportune time with a minute to go in the second quarter. Crossland on to attempt the conversion. Low snap, Popovich got it down, and Crossland put it through there. So with one minute remaining in the second period, Miami has extended their lead to 24 to seven. And John, they've got the hat trick, an offensive touchdown, a defensive touchdown, and a special teams touchdown. Well, an ill-advised pass. You see Troy Noons, who under duress, he should have just thrown this football away once he got by Jamal Green, but he decides to try to pump it down the sidelines and great timing by Leonard Myers. And then he walks the tightrope down the sidelines, really untouched and he's healthy, he's happy, and he's putting the Canes up 24 to seven. Miami's first defensive score of the season. Touchdown-wise, that is. Yeah, you've got to credit Nate Webster and Jamal Green for keeping the pressure on Troy Noons, but a great anticipation play by the cornerback, the junior, Leonard Myers. As you said, we talked about this. He's had an up-and-down season. This time he ends on an up note and pushing the score to 24 points. And Noons can't believe he threw the football down that sideline. That's a bad decision on his part. Only the fifth pick this year thrown by Troy Noons against 11 touchdown passes. John, we have yet to see Mahdi Williams in this football game, a quarterback for Syracuse. We were told that normally they play two possessions, two possessions, two possessions, and so on through the first half. And then at halftime, Pasqualoni says, hey, if we've got a hot guy, we'll go with him. But we've seen Dee Brown at quarterback, and we haven't seen Williams at all. And we were told he was going to start the football game, so that's a, a big surprise from the Syracuse sideline. And right now, Miami controlling the game with a minute left to go before halftime, and as you said, they've scored every way they could on special teams, on defense, and on offense. Pushes the lead 24 to seven. Crossland will kick it off. Will Allen, the deep man. Crossland hangs it high and short, and this is gonna be Woodcock at the 10. Woodcock taken down at the 23 yard line. Number 50, Javon Rhodes, the backup defensive end, making the tackle. And with 54 seconds left to go here in the second quarter, Syracuse will start first and 10. Let's see who they trot on onto the field to try to move the football to Pat Woodcock and company at the quarterback position. It looks like it will be Troy Noons again. 
to try to score, put, put some points on the board before halftime. Only 54 seconds left to go before halftime. Syracuse has no timeouts remaining. Troy Nunes, a freshman quarterback, redshirt freshman from Butler, Pennsylvania. 6'1", 182 pounds. Syracuse with three wide receivers in the formation. Nunes will work out of the shotgun. Gives to Mungro. And Mungro hit down after a gain of about three. Al Blades making the tackle for Miami. And Syracuse uh, doesn't seem to be in any hurry. They don't have any timeouts remaining. Yeah, the last time you take a look at Al Blades right there, the last time that the Hurricanes had an interception for a touchdown, Al Blades was the guy against Rutgers in 1998 who brought it to the house for the Canes defense. Miami going with six defensive backs, the dime package. Syracuse, three wide receivers in the formation. Noons out of the shotgun on a second and six. Again, gives it to Mungro, and Dan Morgan stood him up, but Mungro got away. And then Blades and Webster combined on the tackle to hold that to a gain of four. Good initial contact by Dan Morgan. Couldn't wrap him up, but Miami certainly willing to give up four yards as the clock winds down, and we have reached halftime at the Orange Bowl. So, John, it seemed that the punt return from Santana Moss really woke the Hurricanes up, and Miami leads it 24 to 7. We'll be back with our halftime interview, highlight stats, and a lot more from the Orange Bowl, where Miami leads Syracuse 24 to 7. Back at the Orange Bowl, where Miami leads Syracuse by a score of 24 to 7. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you on Sports Channel, and we're going to take a look at some of the first half numbers and. Really, John, there's not a tremendous amount of difference in a lot of the numbers, but the big plays for Miami really is what made the difference. And one big penalty on Syracuse, a holding penalty, which negated a long touchdown pass. Yeah, and that's been the difference. And I, I said earlier, Frank, in the first half, Syracuse doesn't really scare me throwing the football, and it's indicated by the numbers, the pass yardage, 49 yards through the air for Syracuse to 118 for the freshman quarterback, Ken Dorsey. I do not see Syracuse throwing the football with a lot of success to try to get back into this football game, but they might have to if it gets if the same score uh, occurs in the third quarter as it does in the fourth. And you see the one turnover, the big interception by Leonard Myers, returned for a touchdown. The Miami defense now forcing 31 turnovers so far this season. A look at some of the crowd at the Orange Bowl. We'll be back with the second half kickoff as Syracuse will receive when we return for third quarter action. It's Miami 24, Syracuse 7. We'll be right back with the second half here on Sports Channel. Back at the Orange Bowl, ready for the start of the third quarter. Syracuse will receive the kickoff from Miami as you look at part of the Orange Bowl crowd on just a gorgeous evening for football. And a good day so far for Ken Dorsey. Freshman quarterback, 9 out of 16, 118 yards, one touchdown, and a two-point conversion pass to Andre King. John, if you're the Hurricanes, what you would love to see happen is, you know, a nice play on special teams, defense, make a stop for Syracuse to kick and really, you know, take the fight out of Syracuse early in this second half. Well, take it out of them right away. Go out three plays and out by your defense, and that will follow a great special teams kick by Andy Crossan and good cover. And then you'd like your offense to control some of this clock and get down and, and try to get on the football scoreboard with a touchdown. You'd love to push this lead to 31 to seven and then take your chances uh, with your team in the third and fourth quarter. But Syracuse is gonna have a lot to say about that with the passing. They're gonna probably have to try to keep Troy Noons in the football game to throw the football. But I'd look for Dee Brown if they get it going to run that option. And, and they're still in this football game. You know, a lot of time left in the second half. And, Miami hasn't been able to close the deal a couple times in the second half this year, so uh, Syracuse still in this football game. 24-7 as Andy Crossland tees it up. And as we said before the game, you would hope the way Miami's defense has played the last uh, month or so, that they would be able to close out a football game like this. The defense has played pretty well. They gave up one drive in the first half of significance, a 69-yard 14-play drive, which resulted in Syracuse's only touchdown by Kyle Johnson. So we're ready to go in the second half. Crossland will kick it off, and Will Allen stands back at the Syracuse five-yard line. Crossland drives this one high, and to the goal line, Allen. Allen taken down by Aaron Mosier, and he does not reach the 20 down at the 16-yard line. Aaron Mosier with a nice play on special teams. Well, let me tell you, Frank, that was a terrific play by Aaron Mosier. It looks like his shoulder is by the left shoulder uh, really hurt. 
He made himself small. He lowered that left shoulder to get around a would-be block, and then he makes a big tackle, but he looks like he's in a lot of pain. Take a look, left side of your screen, the second man in a green jersey. Watch him lower the left shoulder and then knife in to get the tackle. You see, he did tackle him with the left arm and left shoulder. That's where the aggravation or the pain started, and you see him on the sidelines. A great play. Let's hope he's okay to get back in on those special teams. Syracuse will stick with the game plan. D. Brown, the quarterback. Three running backs behind him. Brown gave it to Kyle Johnson, who got stacked up right at the line of scrimmage and shoved backwards. Matt Sweeney and Al Blades both there on the tackle for the Miami defense. Yeah, Matt Sweeney, the first player there to stop Kyle Johnson, the big fullback. He had some success going in for a touchdown, but Al Blades also there to help out on the first play of the third quarter. No gain, and now for the first time, we see Mahdi Williams as the Syracuse quarterback. Might see him use his athleticism on the corner, Frank, to try to move the Syracuse uh, offense, to try to get some first downs and move the chains early in the third quarter. On second and 10, Williams, three-step drop. Pass tipped and nearly intercepted by Myers, incomplete. Mahdi Williams, 101 attempts this year, 49 completions. That's only a 48% completion ratio. 654 yards, two touchdowns, and three interceptions. Rushing the football, 73 carries for 135 yards, a 1.8 average, and two touchdowns on the ground. Yeah, he's only averaging 65 yards a game through the air, so it's a it's a little different situation. Paul Pascaloni putting in his actual, his running quarterback in when they're down 24 to seven. Four wide, three wide receivers in the tight end and a slot right for Syracuse on third and 10. Spotwood in motion. Williams with a blitz on. Williams got away momentarily, and then Nate Webster will sack him for a loss of a couple. Flag down on the far side of the field in the Miami secondary. So hold everything. Jack Kramer and his crew will talk it over. It would appear to be on Miami. Any way we can call delay a game on the officials today? Frank. Yeah, we could have done that a couple of times today. Paul Pasqualoni and doesn't look very happy, but then again, Paul rarely ever does. Delay against the offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Okay, so that play Reset never. the game clock. 14:07. That play never happened. The, it was jury, a big the jury will disregard the previous statement. That's right. It was a big play by the Miami defense. They did exactly what you want them to do. Come out three plays and out and get your punt team or your punt return team on. But now the defense has to come up big one more time. Let's see if Nate Webster and Jamal Green and Dan Morgan, the guys up front, can create some pressure, some havoc on Matty Williams. And, of course, you can't refuse a delay of game penalty because the play never occurred. Williams out of the shotgun. And nearly intercepted that end and dropped by Popovich. Morgan had his hands on it. Popovich had his hands on it. And Syracuse dodges a bullet there. I think the problem was Morgan never had his hands on it. His shoulder pads had the football squarely in his grasp. It went right through his hands onto his shoulder pads. And then Jeff Popovich actually has an opportunity to catch the tip from Dan Morgan. He doesn't come up with it. But great plays. Everybody in the right spot that they should be on defense. Great series by the Miami defense. Mike Schaefer in the punt. Moss back to receive at the 50. Looks like they're coming after another one, Frank. Schaefer got it away. Nice looking kick. Drives Moss back to his 41. Santana looking for the wall at the 50. Now he's gonna come back the other way. He's got one. He's got a block from Blades. Moss tripped up at the 40-yard line of Syracuse by Quinton Harris, and Miami will have great field position. How do you like this guy to electrify the crowd? Boy, he is just, you know, we heard the song from ACDC coming out for the second half, and I'll tell you what, he is electricity, AC or DC. Great job by Santana Moss, just trying to find somewhere to go it was about 50 yards of running to get 20, but Santana Moss goes to his right first, then reverses his field, almost gets a great block on the outside right there by Buchanan. Al Blades trying to pitch in, but he does get 20 yards on the return. Clinton Portis with the handoff. 
stepped inside and was tripped up by Keith Bullock, the middle linebacker, who stuck his leg out, really, and tripped Clinton Portis after a gain of two. Well, Frank, this is where the Miami offense needs to step up and be accounted for. Uh, defense does a great job, three plays and out. They force the punt. They go down now. They have great field position starting on the 40-yard line. They have to get it in for a touchdown. They have to take this ball 40 yards and stick it into Syracuse's end zone and go up 31-7. to seven. Call it a gain of three on first down, second and seven. Fulcher in motion. Fake to Portis. Dorsey complete to Fulcher. Written out of bounds by McIntosh at the Syracuse 32. It'll be third and two. Nice pitch and catch to the outside. Mondrell Fulcher, you see his season statistics. 12 receptions for 126 yards. He comes into the game, averaging 10.5 yards every time he touches it out of the backfield. He's done a nice job on this play. It's tough catching the football, going out in the flat, running away from it, but Mondrell uses those big mitts to get it outside and secure the catch. Third and two for the Hurricanes. Fortis. Portis bounces off the tackler, has a first down, and finally taken down at the Syracuse 25-yard line. Again, Keith Bullock, the middle linebacker, making the play, but some tough running by Portis, who weighs only 180. Well, it's almost comical, Frank, when you see to the outside, Clinton Portis is going to almost lose his balance because he has both arms wrapped around this football. He's not going to let it go, but he was very determined. Take a look at the contact right there. He keeps his balance, goes down the field. A great job by the freshman running back. He knew he needed two yards, and he knew there were going to be tough yards to get. He gets hit by the sledgehammer outside. Will Allen, the cornerback, keeps his feet. He's finally tackled by Bullock, but not after a first down. First and 10 at the Syracuse 25. Fortis again up the middle. Fortis picks up six yards to the orange 19-yard line. Willie Ford, number 15, the corner, credited with the tackle. Now, Frank, you're starting to see more room in between the tackles for Clinton Portis to run the football. Today, six, or actually 10 rushes for 62 yards, a 6.2 average. He has not gotten into the end zone yet, but that may all change on this drive. Well, he has come up huge for Miami with the injuries at tailback. He has five 100-yard efforts so far. Second and four. Portis again behind Mercier. Portis got away and dies toward the first down marker, and he may have it. From where the spot is, it appears to be first down yardage. What strong running the back-to-back -back plays by number 28, the freshman Clinton Portis. He ran right through Clifton Smith, the other freshman for Syracuse, the big linebacker at 6'2", 250 pounds, big number nine on the outside. Watch Portis run right through the arm tackle and then get enough yards for the Miami Hurricane first down. 11.50 to go third quarter. Miami on the move. They started at the Syracuse 40. Quick hitch to the outside, Frank. Dorsey, quick out, complete to King at the 10. Andre King down the sideline, shoved out at the Syracuse 3, but it'll be first and goal. Will Allen had to push him out of bounds and save the touchdown for the time being. Yeah, that time Ian McIntosh on the outside giving a lot of cushion on the wide receiver, Andre King. And you saw Ken Dorsey, the freshman, he was alert enough to tell Mondrell Fulcher, we're changing the play, stay right where you are. I'm going to go three steps and make an easy pitch and catch to the outside. He audibles, everybody heard him on the line of scrimmage, a quick dart to the outside. You see Will Allen coming up from that cushion. And, and, and King does a nice job trying to stretch the ball into the end zone for the Hurricanes. First and goal for Miami, double tight end in. That's Fulcher in motion. Portis, Clinton Portis to the one. He's in. He dives into the end zone for a touchdown. Clinton Portis with his seventh rushing touchdown of the season, and Miami extends their lead to 30-7. to seven. Well, Clinton Portis is waiting for a little help from his friends, and it came from the lineman pushing him into the end zone. He does a nice job of inside the tackle running on that drive. The drive goes 40 yards. Clinton Portis in for the Hurricane touchdown. Clinton Portis, number 28, the true freshman from Gainesville. 5'11", 180, but I'll tell you what, he showed some toughness on that drive. Here's Crossland's conversion attempt. It is up and it is good. And with 11 minutes and 27 seconds left to go in the third quarter, Miami off to a perfect start in the second half with a defensive stop and a touchdown. It's the Hurricanes 31, the Orangemen 7. We'll be right back at the Orange Bowl after this. A 
look at the skyline of the city of Miami. A beautiful evening, and so far it's been beautiful for the Hurricanes as they lead it 31-7. to You look at the finish of a seven-play, 40-yard drive. Well, determination. Clinton Porter showed his toughness and his grit. Now take a look at number big number 62, Richard Mercier, shoving his freshman running back into the end zone, but he showed great toughness throughout this drive. Runs to the outside, runs to the inside. It didn't matter. Clinton Portis was determined to get into the end zone for the Hurricane score. One more look at Clinton Portis. And watch Will McPartland just taking on the linebacker, Bullock. Ty Wise in there. And look at Mercier shoving the pile. That's all he needed to do. Richard Mercier, he doesn't score, but he's credited with pushing Clinton Portis into the touchdown. Seven plays, 40 yards, two, two minutes and 15 seconds. Portis goes in from three yards out. Portis four carries for 19 yards on the drive and the touchdown. Here is the kickoff from Crossland. Allen a yard deep. Coming to the near sideline. And Jeff Popovich will take him down at the 12. Miami special teams have swarmed on the two kickoffs this half. John, that's what we said they had to do coming out this half, really. Take control of this game. Take it by the collar and shake it. Well, I think they need some let go. confidence coming into the game. And it looked, they looked a little shaky in the aggressive department coming out to start the football game. But the enthusiasm and the intensity has really carried over into the third quarter. And they're showing what they're made of right here. The offense answered after the defense went three plays and out. Let's see what the defense has in store with 11.15 to go in the third quarter. It's Noons at quarterback, double tight end, two wide receivers. And Mungro the only running back. Give to Mungro. Ran into Matt Sweeney, and he won't let him go. Mark it for a loss of two to the 11-yard line. Syracuse is not going to run north and south on this Miami defense in the second half. They had success early in the game running the option, but right now this Miami defense has some enthusiasm and some, some excitement going, and I think it's, it's really carrying over from the line play to the linebackers all the way to the defensive backs. This defense is really playing well right now. Chris Campbell, the sophomore linebacker, comes out for a breather. D. Brown now steps in at quarterback for Syracuse. Three wide receivers in the formation on a second and 12. Brown on the sprint out. Pitch to Mungro. Mungro taken down by Dan Morgan as he reached the 19-yard line. Gain was eight. It'll bring up third and about four and a half. Well, that's where they beat Miami in the first half, Frank, on the perimeter with Dee Brown making a great decision to pitch it out to James Mungro early because 93, Michael Burrow forces the pitch right there, but there's no help to the outside. Everybody's from inside out. A great block on the outside by 35, Kyle Johnson on the DB, Buchanan, and they were able to spring Mungro for eight yards. Third and four for the Orangemen. Noons out of the shotgun. Blitz coming. Noons over the middle, caught by Spotwood, and he's a yard shy of a first down. An excellent play by Philip Buchanan. Number 31, the freshman cornerback, held him shy of the first down. Yeah, Syracuse had everything they wanted on that play. Man coverage. They had the DBs crossing in the middle, but Buchanan did a nice job, and credit Al Blades coming from the free safety position on the blitz to pressure the pass from Troy Noons. Mike Schaefer in to kick it away. Santana Moss stands at the Miami 36. And it's been a tough day for the Syracuse punting team. Miami has to stay on sides here, Frank. Don't want to give them an automatic first down. Mike Bennett is the snapper. Plenty of time for Schaefer. And whistles blow. Did he get a playoff in time? No, they did not. It's going to be a delay a game on Syracuse. Well, the last time this happened, there was the high snap out of the end zone for a safety. Delay. Gets the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. So I they'll move it from the 22 to the 17-yard line. And Paul Pasqualoni's mood is getting more sour as the evening goes on. Well, Butch Davis called Nick Ward over to the sidelines. I'm not sure. Last time they had a return call. They weren't pressuring the punter. They may come after the punter this time. Ed Reed has blocked a punt already tonight. There's been a high snap out of the end zone for a safety, and Santana Moss has taken one to the house from 61 yards. 
So with 8.55 left to go, third quarter, Schaefer will kick it again. A little bit off on the snap and just did get it away. Moss signals for a fair catch and makes it diving at the 50-yard line. Well, Nick Ward appeared to get a little piece of Schaefer, but the referee said, no, nope, you're not going to get an Oscar for that. It'll be Miami ball at midfield when we return. Hurricanes lead 31-7, 8.47 left to go in the third. And it's one of the most fun things you can do with your clothes on doing that show. <laughs> That's right. A great time is usually had by all. 8.47 left to go in the third. A look at Ty Wise, the Hurricane senior center out of Pensacola. He's played the last two weeks with a broken rib and a disc problem in his back. You talk about a warrior. This kid defines the word. You look up warrior in the dictionary, his picture's there. Yeah, there's a couple of them. There's one that plays beside him, too, in Richard Mercier. These guys are tough kids. Both seniors both wanted to go out on a high note and both never playing in a January 1 bowl game. And that's one of their goals uh, to get to that January 1 game in, in Jacksonville in the Gator Bowl. And right now they're taking care of business at 31 to seven. And of course still business to be taken care of as well. If they can finish this game off in the next week, Temple at one o'clock, at, rather at noon here at the Orange Bowl. And that would give Miami with two victories and eight and four regular season. And given their strength of schedule, that's not so bad. First and 10 from midfield. Jared Payton with the football. Payton hit in the backfield, penalty flag down. Payton will lose three yards on the play, but let's check out the flags. Would appear to be a hold on Miami, and it is. So the play lost three, and they'll also mark off 10. That's a tough situation. Hold it. That's the offense. Ten yards down the previous five. Repeat first down. Frank, that's a tough situation for the Miami offense. Syracuse comes out first and ten on the 50. They have nine people within five yards of the line of scrimmage, man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, and you know Miami's going to run the football to try to burn some clock. You know, you want to take the cuffs off of Ken Dorsey, maybe give him an opportunity there to make a big play, but it's a tough situation coming out from a timeout. First down and 20 now. Dorsey going deep for Santana Moss and he made the catch but was he out of bounds yes he was out of bounds penalty flags down it appeared as if Duke Pettijohn had gotten into the neutral zone Will Allen had the coverage on Moss who made a spectacular catch but could not get a foot down in bounds that's exactly right Duke Pettijohn he, the first half he was close to being in the procedure uh, okay. mode defense five yard five penalty yard. Still, still full down take one more look at the catch by Moss as he's working on Will Allen one-on-one. -on -one. Nice little cross there. Just really trying to get a rub or a pick, if you will, on the outside to Santana Moss. It's the exact same coverage Syracuse came with the play before. They elected to run the football. This time they want to make Santana make a big play, and he almost gets the big toe down in there. Looked like he was splitting the line with the front half of his foot inbounds and the back half out. The offside penalty gives Miami the second touch crack at the first down play. It's first and 15. Dorsey, three-step drop. Complete to King. Andre at midfield. Spins down to the Syracuse 44-yard line. Picked up 10 yards on the play. Keith Bullock, the middle linebacker, coming out to help on the tackle, number 33. Good job by Ken Dorsey changing the play. Andre King wide open in the flat. And Andre did a good job of getting what he could and then securing the football going north and south. Watch the, the nice pass, three-step drop by Ken Dorsey. Rifles it out to, to King on the outside. Now watch the move right here. He secures the football, and he goes down and gets what he can. It's good, pl good, good play on the outside by Andre King. Picked up 11. It's second and four. Fulcher in motion. Dorsey flips it out, complete to McPartland. McPartland has the ball stripped out of bounds by Clifton Smith at the 40-yard line, and that's going to be very close to a first down. Clifton Smith making the play despite the fact that he lost his helmet. I believe they are going to call it a fumble. That'll take it back to the 41-yard line where it went out of bounds. So it's still third and short for Miami. 
look for Miami to use their snap count to their advantage as we see some young Hurricane fans in the stands enjoying the game tonight. But look for Ken Dorsey to use his cadence to his advantage this time and try to get a cheap first down. Only one wide receiver in the formation. That's Reggie Wayne out to the top of your screen. Two tight ends, Fulcher and Franks. Fake to Payton. Dorsey on a rollout. Dorsey complete to Wayne at the 20. Reggie Wayne spins down to the 16-yard line. And a big first down for the Hurricanes. Well, nice play call by Larry Coker. Gets Ken Dorsey out of the heat in the kitchen in the pocket. Gets him outside. They wanted to throw the football to the flat to Will McPartland on the wide side. Nothing doing, but Ken Dorsey had enough time and enough presence of mind to hold the football, get it outside, and give, San, uh, give Reggie Wayne an opportunity to break off of his route. You see Will Allen on the coverage, wasn't even close. Reggie Wayne, a big play down the field. You see the separation on the outside. No one even close to big number 87. Still one wide receiver in the set. It's Santana Moss to the bottom of the screen. This is Peyton. Really nowhere to go. Jarrett gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Clifton Smith, number nine, the linebacker credited with the tackle. It'll be second and 10 for the Hurricanes. Maybe second and nine. We'll give Peyton credit for a yard gain to the 16. And Syracuse fans getting <laughs> cooled off, although there's no need today. It's a nice, cool evening with the sun now down behind the horizon. Sebastian takes no prisoners on the other side. Ken Dorsey, he wasn't around for last year's route at Syracuse, but he certainly heard about it from his teammates this week. Miami with the trips left, and now Moss back in motion on a second and nine. Dorsey, end zone for Moss, caught. Touchdown! Will Allen had the coverage, but it wasn't good enough. Well, Miami has definitely done their homework, self-scouting themselves. This time, Santana Moss, he ran the play earlier in the first half where he cuts over back to the middle and then to the outside. This time, he just runs a wheel route off of the same motion action. Syracuse was looking inside. Moss goes down the sideline for a Hurricane touchdown. And with 6.15 left to go in the third quarter, the Hurricanes now lead 37-7. to A look at Santana Moss, the junior out of Carroll City High School as Crossland attempts the conversion and puts it through there. Miami 38, Syracuse 7. We'll take a timeout on the field with 6.15 left to go in the third quarter. The Hurricanes have put two more touchdowns on the board here in the third and now lead it 38 to 7. Six fifteen left to go third quarter. It is all Miami 38 to 7. The 16 yard touchdown pass from Ken Dorsey to Santana Moss. Dorsey on the drive four for four for 54 yards, and John, believe it or not, this is Santana Moss's first touchdown catch since the Florida State game. Yeah, it's incredible to see Santana Moss not get in the end zone via the offensive passing game, but Santana Moss goes up and gets the football. Another wrinkle that the Miami offensive staff and Larry Coker has come up with off of the short side passing game with the tight end and via the fullback, or now Santana Moss, Earlier in the first half, he came underneath and went back outside. This time, he runs the wheel route, and you see the receivers celebrating in the end zone. And a nice play by Ken Dorsey to give his wide receiver, again, enough presence to go up and get the football. He kept the ball in bounds. And when you have playmakers like Santana Moss and Reggie Wayne and Andre King on the outside, Bubba Franks on the inside, just give him a chance, and usually it's good enough for a score. Santana Moss, as you look at the scoring drive, five plays, 50 yards, 232 off the clock. Of course, he had the touchdown last week on the punt return against Rutgers and another touchdown on a punt return in this football game. That's Will Allen from the two. And he is swarmed under at the seven-yard line. Oh, man, Popovich and LeVar Scott, numbers 33 and 39. And this Miami special teams coverage unit is just crazed here in the second half. Well, I think Miami's starting to smell blood for last year, and they want to make this game as ugly as possible. Right now, 38-7 to with 6.05 left to go in the third quarter. Syracuse has, so, has shown no desire or no success to throw the football against this Miami team. You see Ken Dorsey on the other side has had some success, 15 to 22 for 185 and two touchdowns. First and 10, Orangeman from their seven yard line. D. Brown is the quarterback. Pat Woodcock, the only wide receiver set to the bottom of the screen. Brown on the sprint out. Keeps the football and he's gonna go down. 
loses a yard. Leonard Myers there for the Miami defense, number 22, along with 93, Michael Burrow. Boy, that's just great team defense. I think they finally are winning the battle at the corner of the line of scrimmage where the, the option play really starts. Watch to the right of your screen. 94 does a great job. William Joseph doesn't get cut that time. He doesn't get forced down. He's able to contain the line of scrimmage, scrape down the line of scrimmage. That will stop the option play because Dee Brown doesn't have the experience of knowing what to do in that situation. And you see the total yards here, Miami 259 to Syracuse is 140. Noons back in the game at quarterback. Spotwood in motion. Noons under some pressures, delivers it, complete to Bennett as tight end. There's Bennett to the 20, and Mike Rump finally runs him down up at the 25-yard line. That is plenty for a Syracuse first down. That time, Noons made a nice play on the outside of the pocket, trying to find his tight end. The backup tight end, Mike Bennett, only came into the, the game tonight with three catches for 37 yards, but he was caught on the crossing route. You see the Miami defenders looking inside. Bennett goes to the outside, just catches the easy pass, and Michael Rump, with the collar tackle on the outside. Had to, had to make the play after a gain of 19. First and 10, Noon still the quarterback. D. Brown picks up seven. Nate Webster making the tackle. 4.48 in the clock moving here in the third quarter. Miami with a 38 to seven lead. And I'm sure they will be content to let Syracuse try to grind it out on the ground. Yeah, and Dee Brown's been the workhorse at, via quarterback or at the running back position. He's had the most success against this Miami defense tonight. Second and a long two. Ball between the orange 32 and 33 yard line. Noons on the option. Noons keeping. Has a first down, lost the football. It's loose, and Dan Morgan fell on it, and it's going to be Miami's ball. I thought for a second that the ball came out on contact with the ground, but they are calling it a fumble, and Miami has the football. You're exactly right, Frank. I thought the ball was dead because Noon's body hit the ground. You see Paul Pascaloni on the Syracuse sideline. He can't figure out, but one guy that can is Dan Morgan falls on the loose football for the Hurricane defense, and we'll take another look and see if we can see Troy Noon's if he's down by contact of the ground or by a, a hit from a defender from Miami, it looked like the ball came out, but his knees were down. In any event, the ball squirts loose. Nobody can get on it. You see Dan Morgan to the right of your screen gets on the football for the Hurricanes. Well, the, the ball did not hit the ground, but it appeared his knee might have been down, but that's a bang-bang call. That's and a great aggressive play by the Miami defense. You see Al Blades also around the football. First and 10 at the Syracuse 40. Dorsey. Going to go for it all. Going for Moss. Dropped it at the goal line. He can't believe it. He had a step on Will Allen. And a freshman says, Santana, you owe me one. Wow. Santana Moss, the last guy you would think to drop the football tonight, having a great night on special teams and offensively. A nice throw by Ken Dorsey. He beats the double coverage down the middle of the field. This throw beats the double coverage because he puts it in a spot where Santana Moss can get it and no one else can. Santana just taking his eyes off the ball at the last second. It beat him up at the goal line. Second and 10, Hurricanes. Fulcher in motion. Give us to Portis. Portis 35-30. Portis inside the 25-yard line. Ian McIntosh, the safety, tripped him up and then Keith Bullock, the middle linebacker, finished him off but that is a pickup of almost 20 and a Miami first down. Great patience by the freshman running back, Clinton Portis, number 28. He goes off left tackle and he waits for his blocking. Watch the dip to the outside and then the cutback right here off Will McPartland's block to the outside. Does a nice job of setting up his blocking in front of him. Clinton Portis having a big evening. The true freshman out of Gainesville, Florida. Boy, has he been a fine this year. Unbelievable, these guys have stepped up and done a terrific job, quarterback, wide receiver, and running back. Clock moving with 3.37 to go in the third. Give us to Portis on the counter play. Behind a Mercier block, and Portis takes a big hit from Keith Bullock, who shoves him out at the 17-yard line. The gain was four. A little frustration shown that time by the Orangeman middle linebacker, Keith Bullock, number 33, leads the team in tackles, but that time, Made a devastating hit, and you can see how upset he is about the score right now at 38-7. to 7. 
a little frustrated that they're not able to stop Miami offensively in the second half, but he comes out, runs all the way from the left side of the field, beeline to Clinton Portis. Clinton never saw him, and he caught him airborne and shoves him out of bounds. Portis, 13 carries, 88 yards, and a touchdown so far. Second and six for the Hurricanes. Fake to Portis. Dorsey on the rollout. Dorsey fires high for Bubba Franks. What a catch! Oh, he tipped it to himself and made the catch, and that's why he's a first-team All-American. That's why he's an All-American, and that's why he's going to be a prize package in the NFL. Just big Bubba Franks tips the ball to himself. Ken Dorsey waited a, maybe a touch too long to deliver the ball, but he found big number 88 coming over the middle. He said, hey, that's routine, man. I do that all the time in practice, tells his buddy Mondrell Fulcher, but a great play and adds to the excitement, which is 44 to seven, the Miami lead. Well, Miami is extracting their pound of flesh from Syracuse after last season. Crossland with the extra point attempt. And it is good. Two minutes, 43 seconds remain in the third quarter of play. A look at Bubba Franks, big double snowman, number 88. And that is his fifth touchdown catch of the season. John came into the game with 35 catches, and he had four in the first half, now 40 total on the season. Bubba will come from the left side of your screen. You see Ken Dorsey just waiting for him to clear. Actually goes through the hands of Greenwood, and then through the hands of Bubba Franks, he tips it to himself. Great concentration. Watch the concentration after the ball goes through the Syracuse defender. He tips it with his left hand, and he has enough presence of mind to roll back over and catch it in the end zone for the Hurricane touchdown. Ken Dorsey staring down Keith Bullock. Bullock saying, you ain't that good, you ain't that good? Yeah, well, guess what? It's 45-7, fella. Take a look at the scoreboard. Yeah, a lot of John going on. Ken Dorsey does the smart thing and said, I'm going to go celebrate with somebody I can talk to. I can't talk to you, Keith Bullock, but I will go to see Bubba Franks in the end zone after the score. Third touchdown pass of the day for Dorsey as you look at Daniel Bubba Franks, all 6'6", 260 pounds of him, and a surefire first-round draft pick in the NFL. And I think it's... The consensus is he's going to come out after this season. It would be probably a shock if he didn't. Miami scoring drive, by the way, as you look at Bubba's numbers on the game, four plays, 40 yards, a minute and 27, Dorsey to Franks from 17 yards out. Ken Dorsey, John, I can't say enough about the kid. I mean, this is two games, and granted, Rutgers is one of the worst defenses in Division I, but this Syracuse defense, pretty darn good group. Well, you got to look at the, at the timing in the pass offense, number one, and the decisions he makes. He's not afraid to audible to the quick three-step drops. The only thing he's improved on, and he has improved on it in this game, is the deep ball. He came out early, threw a couple balls down the left-hand sideline, out of bounds. you got to give your receiver a chance to go up with the catch. Well, he threw a strike to Santana Moss that was dropped in the end zone, but he came back to Reggie Wayne for a touchdown, and Santana Moss put enough air into the football to give his receivers a chance to catch it. Crossland's kick going five yards deep, and this time Will Allen says, let's take the ball on the 20. The three previous kickoffs this half, Syracuse started at their 16, their 13, and their 7. So a touchback is an improvement. And he's taking a beating on every one. Two minutes, 38 seconds to go, third quarter. Miami has ripped off three touchdowns here in the third quarter to blow this thing just wide open at 45-7. to seven. D. Brown will be in at quarterback for the Orangemen. Let's look at Dorsey in first career starts. Now this is, of course, last week against Rutgers. Of course, the most important thing there is the W. But uh, he'll stack his numbers up uh, pretty well against those other guys. That's right. He's done a great job this evening, too, distributing the football. Brown, the quarterback, on first and 10 from the Syracuse 20. And whistles blow this play dead. Play clock was down to one, so it couldn't be that. Or could it? Here is Jack Kramer. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still, we're down. Reset the clock. 2.38. 2.38 goes back up on the clock. Butch Davis's team in control, 45 to 7. And he hasn't had many like this this year. It's been a season of a lot of frustration, some close losses, some games that you look back and say, could have won, should have won, but 
you know, coulda, shoulda, doesn't get it, but uh, they have really taken care of business today against the Syracuse Orangemen. He's been able to relax a little bit on the sidelines in the second half because his defense has been so dominant in the play of Ken Dorsey and the wide receivers, Clinton Portis, you couldn't ask for anything more out of your offense. First and 15 with Nunes, the quarterback. Nunes still has the football, being chased by Hips. Nunes lofts it downfield, caught by Woodcock at the 38. Takes a big hit from Mike Rump at the 28-yard line, excuse me, and all that goes for a gain of eight. Yeah, big hit, big time by the sophomore corner, Michael Rump. You see him right there, 6'2", 195, came into the game with 63 total tackles and really laid out Pat Woodcock, but he was wide open in the secondary. You see right there, Quincy Hips attacking the quarterback from Syracuse, Troy Nunes. He does a nice job of finding his wide receiver. Now the big hit comes right there, and as you said, Frank, all that for a minimal gain. Well, I take it back. It was a gain of 13 because it was first and 15. On a second and two, Mungro will get the first down to the 31-yard line. Blades and Popovich combining on the tackle, and that will move the chains for the Orange with a minute 53 left to go here in the third quarter. This second half is going exactly the way the Miami Hurricanes would like it to go. You see Al Blades in the center of your screen. The clock is running. Miami up 45-7, to seven, a minute 45 and counting. This defense in total control of the football game. Syracuse with the double wide out to the bottom of the screen. First and 10 from their 31. Noon's the quarterback. Faking. Noon's down the sideline. Caught by Brominski as big tight end. And Brominski finally shoved out at the Miami 42-yard line. Jeff Popovich had to push him out. And Syracuse has a big gain and a first down in Miami territory. Yeah, nice back-to-back -back plays that time through via the air. Troy Nunes finding a wide-open receiver just over the outstretched hands of Al Blades. See, Blades finally realized that the big tight end, Stephen Brominski, was behind him. Popovich and Rump have a big job on their hands trying to get the 6'4", 266-pound senior out of bounds. Gain was 26. First and 10 at the Miami 42. Nunes. Gave it to Mungro, and he'll go down after a gain of only a yard. Damian Lewis, number 92, laying the smackdown on James Mungro. And he let you know about it, too. Big number 92 in the middle of the screen. 6'3", all 285 pounds of the junior for the Hurricanes up front. Does a nice job of securing that line of scrimmage. That's been the battle that Miami teams on both sides of the football on offense and defense have had trouble sustaining for three and four quarters. Tonight, they're doing a good job of it. We have reached the one minute mark and counting here in the third quarter. Second and nine for the Orangemen. Noons on the option. Noons still going, has a first down inside the Miami 30 yard line. Al Blades and Mike Rump had to run him out of bounds but not before Noons picked up the first down and stopped the clock with 44 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Troy doing a nice job on the option play. Normally, D. Brown's the guy that goes to the outside and makes it happen on the option play against her, the Hurricanes today. But Noon's doing a nice job there in securing the corner, throwing the football. That's what he's more used to doing. 10 completions out of 16 attempts for 113 yards. Hasn't had a lot of production out of the 10 completions and one interception. First and 10 from the Miami 28. Noon's gave it to Sagano, the fullback. He'll get about three before Dan Morgan, number 44, made the tackle. Good look at the junior out of Coral Springs, Florida. 108 total tackles coming into the game, 13 of those for losses. And really slowed by injury this year. A hamstring hampered him throughout the first half of the season. Then he had a, a broken finger problem that really slowed him down. But to his credit, he's back in the lineup, really hasn't missed a lot of action, and is very productive in that linebacking core. Second and seven should be the final play of the third quarter. Noons will throw. Now under some heat. Incomplete. Was looking for Mungro, number 23, and Damian Lewis might have gotten a finger on that ball. It'll be third and seven for Syracuse when we continue. It is the end of the third quarter here in the Orange Bowl, and right now it is all Hurricanes. Miami 45, Syracuse 7. We'll be back with the fourth quarter here at the Orange Bowl right after this. Start of the fourth quarter at the Orange Bowl, and you can see Miami with that two nothing lead after one, piling up 22 in the second and 21 in that third quarter of play. And 
putting some real distance between themselves and Paul Pasqualoni's crew. Yeah, really did the damage in the second quarter and the third quarter. Coming out at halftime, they really came out with some fire and, and a purpose on defense. Three plays and out, they get a big special teams play, and then the, the Hurricanes offense took the controls into the end zone a couple times. Third and seven for Syracuse. D. Brown at quarterback. Brown has to pitch quick to Mungro. And Mungro run down by Nate Webster. Picked up only about a yard and a half. It'll be fourth and six. The thing is, John, 99% of the time, you know what's coming when D. Brown's a quarterback. Now, exactly. You still have to stop it. Yeah. He's not going to throw the football, but what Miami did that time was make him make a decision right away. The defensive line on the line of scrimmage came up and got right in D. Brown's face. He had to pitch the ball early. And that let the Miami pursuit get to the running back. Miami making some late changes. They got more than 11 on the field, and they're going to have to take a timeout. Nunes was coming in at quarterback, and you would expect to throw on fourth and six. 14-26 left to go fourth quarter. Timeout on the field at the Orange Bowl. It's Miami 45, Syracuse 7. Back at the OB on Sports Channel in a minute. If you missed out on any of the 1999 Baseball Night in Florida excitement, here's your chance to catch some highlights. The next Baseball Night in Florida Encore is Thursday at 7 p.m. when you can see the Devil Rays July 1st game at the Boston Red Sox, all right here on Sports Channel Florida. 14.26 left to go in the fourth quarter. Fourth and six facing Syracuse at the Miami 24. Canes lead at 45 to seven. Troy Nunes is the quarterback. Nunes on the rollout. Looking for the Pat Woodcock as receiver who makes the catch at the Miami 12 yard line and that'll be a first down. Just single coverage on the outside on Michael Rump. Woodcock just a, a quick out route rolled into that 10 to 12 route and Nunes put the ball right on the money. Nice timing played by Syracuse enough for the first down. Syracuse converts on the fourth and six to keep this drive alive. It started back at their 20 yard line. First and 10 at the 11 as you see Woodcock the junior out of Canada, Ontario, Canada. Noon stays at quarterback on a first and 10. Mungro gets to the 10. Penalty flag flies in. Matt Sweeney got a piece of that tackle along with Al Blades. Gain was only a yard. Let's check out the marker. Illegal chop block against Syracuse. Which says, put, put him back. back. <laughs> That's a 10 yard penalty. Illegal block against the offense. 15 yard penalty, still first down. I take it back, it's 15 yards and you know that's, that's an appropriate penalty in terms of the severity of it because those kind of blocks, that's the kind that knock people out of games Forever. in seasons. Yeah, it ends seasons and sometimes ends careers and you have to take a, a appropriate action for that. And at this time of the game, Syracuse right now, their offensive lineman may be a little tired trying to take the, the cheap way or the quick way out, trying to chop the Miami defending the defensive lineman. First and 25 now. D. Brown is the quarterback. Brown, quarterback draw. Brown to the 25. Cut down by Mike Rump on a nice tackle. Mike Rump cut the legs down and a late flag flying in. That'll be a personal foul on uh, Syracuse, it looked like number 23, James Mungro, with a little head shiver to Dan Morgan's uh, helmet. Well, the referees have to keep this thing from getting out of control because clearly Syracuse frustration is mounting. And with 13.41 to go, we'll see what Kramer has foul. to do. Offense, dead ball, personal foul, defense, penalties, offset, second down. Well, Frank, that's the easy way out, but that was clearly a penalty on the uh, backup running back for Syracuse. Dan Morgan did not retaliate, and uh, I guess that's the easy way to say, let's calm down, fellas. The gain was four to the 22-yard line. Second and 21. 
Here comes a formation, Frank. Oh, look at this. Four guys out to the top of the screen. Noons. Screen pass to Mungro. Mungro to the 15 and taken out at the 11 yard line. Hey, Webster making the tackle for Miami. Pretty well designed play there by Syracuse. Yeah, it was. They tried to fake the hit screen out to the wide side where the three linemen were. They still had three linemen out in front of Mungro for the middle screen. A nice design of a play. You see Noons fake to the outside, and he'll try to run the screen back to the short side. He had a lot of bodies out in front, but Miami did a pretty good job. Nate Webster and Al Blades forcing Mungro out of bounds. It'll bring up third and 10 from the 11-yard line. Miami goes with the extra defensive back on the third and 10. Thirteen twenty-one to go, fourth quarter. Noons with a blitz coming. Steps in, complete, Malik Campbell. Campbell to the two yard line and he may or may not have a first down, it depends on the spot. They're gonna put him out at the one and that will be a first down. Leonard Myers finally forced him out of bounds. Malik Campbell, the sophomore out of Buffalo, New York, 6'2", 187 pounder. That is his 18th catch of the season. Man coverage to the outside, but a lot of cushion to the outside. You see Campbell, no one in the screen until Buchanan and Myers comes up. They push him out at the one, but it's Syracuse first and goal at the Miami one yard line. 13-12 to go fourth quarter. First and goal for the Orangemen. Noon's the quarterback. Gives to Mungro. Mungro to the goal line and touchdown. Late signal from the linesman on the far side, but it is a Syracuse touchdown with 13.07 left to go in the football game. Well, just a chink in the armor that time by the Miami defense. Mongro goes in following the full house backfield off the right side, following Corey Bowen, Joe Burton, and Jeff Pylon to the right side. See, Miami does a good job getting some surge into the backfield. See Matt Sweeney in the backfield but not good enough to get to stop Syracuse from a yard out. They get in and push the score to 45 to 13. And Nate Trout will line up the extra point. Out of the hole to Troy Nunes. High snap, flags down, and the kick is good, but let's check out the penalty. You look at James Mungro, sophomore out of East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. And again, a little pushing and shoving after the play. Mark Banowitz, senior offensive tackle involved in that. But the flags came as the ball was being snapped. Illegal formation. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Well, they'll make Nate Trout kick it again. Or will they? They may just say forget it and let's go on to the next thing. It looks like Miami was walking off the football field, but looks like Trout is still on to try the conversion from five yards further out. 13.07 left to go here in the Orange Bowl. Miami with a big second quarter, a punt return from Santana Moss, an interception return from Leonard Myers, and it was 24-7 and a half, then a big third quarter with three touchdowns. And this thing has broken wide open. Syracuse retaliating here early in the fourth quarter with their second score of the day. And so Nate Trout will line it up once again, the senior out of Merritt Island, Florida. 31 out of 32 extra points this year. Fumbled snap, Noons still has the football, and Leonard Myers will take him down. Well, that's just the way things are going for Syracuse today. Earlier in the season, he took one of those fumbled snaps against the University of Pittsburgh and turned it into a touchdown, but this time, no luck for Troy Noons. He was scrambling around trying to make a play, but Leonard Myers would have nothing of it. Makes a big tackle in the Syracuse backfield. It's 45-13 Miami, 13.07 left to go. Fourth quarter at the Orange Bowl, back on Sports Gen Channel right after this. Aaron Moss, uh, excuse me, Santana Moss and Aaron Mosier back to receive the kickoff of Nate Trout. 
45-13, Miami leads it. Trout's kick coming to Moss at the eight. To the 20, still going and down at the 21 yard line. Quentin Harris, number 29 on the special teams tackle for the Orangemen and Miami will start first and 10 from that point. A look at Santana Moss, a punt return for a touchdown and a touchdown catch in this game today. Yeah, big game for Santana Moss and a big game for Ken Dorsey coming back, back-to-back -back weeks, doing a great job moving this offense. Let's see if the Miami offensive line now can take control with 12.57 left to go in the game. They can use Clinton Portis in the backfield and, and also Jared Payton, who's in the ball game right now, to, to grind a little clock. Double tight end for Miami. Fulcher and Franks with McPartland and Payton at running back. Fake to Payton. Dorsey going to have to take it himself. And Dorsey will do the wise thing and run out of bounds at the 34-yard line of Miami. Picked up 12 and has a first down. Frank, that's one of those when you're a quarterback running outside by yourself, you can't believe that there's no one out there that you got to run as fast and as hard as you can for maybe a 10 or 11 yard gain, but that's exactly what Ken Dorsey does. Kenny Kelly has this ball, he's up the sideline, but Ken Dorsey not as, as gifted in the running department as, as Kenny Kelly, but he does make a first down. Again, the double tight end for the Hurricanes. This is Jared Payton. Payton to the 40. Picked up about six. Quentin Harris, number 29, sophomore safety out of Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Second and four now for Miami. Miami just trying to grind out some clock. They don't need to score anymore. Nice job on that play by Mercier Wise and Eric Schnupp in the ball game right now. Doing a good job up front on that line of scrimmage. Second and four for the Hurricanes. Ivan Mercer in as the second tight end. Fake to Payton. Throw is complete to McPartland and he's taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Ian McIntosh, the safety, making the tackle. No gain on the play, it'll be third and four. Well that time McIntosh guesses right and McPartland really caught, caught the football and then caught McIntosh coming in from that strong safety position. No gain on the play, a great play that time by Ian McIntosh. Only 5'9", 179, but when you're not looking, you've got the advantage as a defensive back. Wayne and Moss both to the top of the screen on this third and four. Dorsey gives to Payton. Payton has the first down to the 45-yard line before Keith Bullock was able to drag him down. So Miami will move the chains with 11.27 left to go fourth quarter. Frank, if there's such a thing as a, as a nice four-yard carry, that was it because Peyton knew exactly what he needed to do to move the chains. He had an opportunity to bounce it outside, saw the crease, and went north and south. Watch, there's no hesitation right here in Jared Peyton. He sees the crease. He knows he needs four yards. He gets those feet and legs going up into the hole and gets enough for the first down. Get the shoulder pad square and get upfield, son. First and 10 from the 45. Peyton again. Peyton busting through. Peyton into Syracuse territory. Takes a good hit, but hangs on to the football at the Orange 42-yard line, a gain of 13. But Jared Peyton, he saw it last week against Rutgers. He is a tough kid. Determined running back right there, number 34, Jared Peyton. He's bouncing around off of Syracuse would-be tacklers, but will not go down until he gets another first down. You see him in the open field, tuck the football away, takes the hit from number 25, Will Allen, and gets going backwards, but not until he moves the sticks again for the Hurricane. He has shown that he is not afraid of contact. Jarrett's numbers on the night, looking pretty good. Peyton again, this time trying to go to the outside, got away from one tackle, and then is swarmed under as he got back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. Quentin Harris and Keith Bullock combining on the tackle for Syracuse. Second and 10, Miami. Clock continues to run. 10 minutes, 20 seconds left to go. And Jared's roomy, the quarterback. Ken Dorsey goes over and helps him off off the ground. Says, hey, don't worry about that. When you give you another shot right here. Ball remains at the 42-yard line. Well, you see, true freshman at quarterback, two true freshmen at tailback for Miami. 
McPartland in motion. Fake to Payton, Dorsey delivers complete. Ethnic Sands makes the catch down at the 32 yard line. He'll be close to first down yardage. Will Allen making the tackle as you see Ethnic Sands. Young wide receiver, former high school quarterback coming off with a bit of an equipment problem here and it is a Miami first down. The impressive thing about this Frank is the timing of quarterback and wide receiver. Ken Dorsey comes back, he hits his fifth step, the ball's gone. Sands is not even into his route. He turns around, bang, the ball is there. He turns it upfield, first down Hurricanes. That's what you have to like with your youthful guys playing the majority of the game at quarterback, at tailback, you have great continuity with quarterback and receiver, great timing. 9.33 left to go in the game. Gain was 11 and a Miami first down. Dorsey, under some pressure, swings it complete to Payton. Jarrett cuts inside at the 30, still on his feet. Jarrett Payton tripped up as he gets to the 22 yard line. Keith Bullock had to make the tackle, but Jarrett Payton is close to another first down. He's got some good hands, John. He's shown the ability to catch the ball coming out of the backfield. I like the part that he's so elusive when he makes that spin move. He'll make the first guy miss. Nice alert pass to the flat. Watch the spin move right here, Frank. After he gets hit, he just turns his body out of the tackle and then goes north and south. That's what you like about him. He always knows which way to move his body to get out of the tackle and go forward. Miami with two new offensive tackles in the game. Shirko Hajiwasuli, number 74, and Ed Wilkins, number 72. On a first and 10, give to Payton. Forced to bounce outside, penalty flag down, and Jarrett stopped for a loss of a couple. Moreland Greenwood, number 52, Clifton Smith, number nine, making the tackle. And it's a hold on the Hurricanes. So the clock stopped with 8.44 to go. Miami with a 45 to 13 lead over the Orangemen of Syracuse. Syracuse had a, a lead early in the second quarter at 7-2, but then a big punt return, 61 yards for a touchdown by Santana Moss, and that just seemed to energize the entire Miami football team. They added another touchdown and then an interception return by Leonard Myers, and just like that, it was 24-7 at the half. And it got the crowd back into the football game, and it got this defense to take charge in the third quarter. They really did a nice job coming out after the locker room talk. They come out in three plays and out, set up the offense right away. They go down and take it in for a touchdown, and Butch Davis and staff, you see Art Kehoe there, the offensive line coach. They've done a decent job offensively tonight, moving the football on the ground, and they've been dominant on that offensive line. First and 20, McPartland in motion. Dorsey on the rollout. Fires to the sideline, caught by King, and he is shoved out at the 25-yard line. Will Allen making the tackle. Look at Ken Dorsey, the freshman quarterback. Gain was six on that play. It'll be a second and 14. Just a two-receiver route to the outside. He had Santana Moss as well to the short side, but elected to go to the short receiver. Now they're going to go with three wide receivers in the football game. What Miami calls their diamond package with the three wide outs. Aaron Mosier, Andre King, and Ethnic Sands are the wide outs. Peyton the only running back. Dorsey, complete to Peyton. Peyton could not get away. Dropped by Eric Downing, the big defensive tackle, and that play lost five. Trying to go back to the screen pass that they used so well early in the ball game. That time the linemen were out in front of the running back and you have to have perfect spacing when you're running the, uh, the screen play, especially to the wide side. If your linemen get out in front of the running back, those defenders will come in from behind the play to tackle you. You see Don Solinger pointing that out to Jared Payton. He said, don't worry about it. Just try to hug your linemen a little tighter that next time. Third and 19. Dorsey, under pressure, fumbles the football. Duke Pettijohn picks it up. Pettijohn being chased. Clinton Portis bumps into him, and he, he goes down, and he fumbled the football. And it looks like Miami got it back. Clinton Portis has it at the 35 of the Hurricanes. I think Pettijohn was trying to lateral that football back, and as, as he did, he was hit by a Miami offensive player trying to get back to make the tackle. As you said, Clinton Portis on the football, and Paul Pascaloni wants to insert foot into mouth because he can't believe it either. Well, credit Syracuse with the sack. Their second sack of the day. 
It was Pettijohn who forced it and picked it up. Now watch as he's running down the field, Frank. He eludes Dorsey right there, but watch, he'll try to pitch the football right here as he's going down. And it looked like Will McPartland actually got him from behind and Portis on the loose football for the Hurricanes. So there was a change of possession. It'll be first and 10 for Miami. There's a timeout for an injury with seven minutes and 25 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. Hurricanes have the football back. Miami leads it 45-13. Back at the Orange Bowl here on Sports Channel right after this. That's right, we will play if asked. <laughs> we'll play for Greenspeed. Right. First and 10 from the 35 for the Hurricanes after the wild fumble sequence. Dorsey will put it up. Out of reach of Ethnic Sands at the Miami 47. Willie Ford, number 15, on the coverage. Well, they're still running their offense, John. They, they want some of these backup linemen to get some experience running the offense. I mean, Scott Puckett now in there at center. Robert Sampson, Ed Wilkins, Shirko Haji Rasuli, and Eric Schnupp comprising the offensive front right now, and the backup wide receivers in there as well. Yeah, they've got some new bodies in there, and it's always great to expose them to the offense and getting them in, into the flow of the football game, even though you have it well in hand. Robert Williams in at fullback. Portis the tailback. The pitch goes to Portis. Portis, 35, up close to the 40-yard line, taken down there, picked up five. It'll be third and five. And the clock continues to move with 7.07 left to go. Keith Bullock, the middle linebacker, making the tackle again and adding to his Big East leading totally at 124 tackles in 10 games coming into the contest. And he was averaging 13.8 every game. And you see Clinton Portis, 15 rushes for 98 yards, 6.5 average. He's been ripping off some runs tonight for one and one touchdown as well. Third and five for Miami at their 40. Dorsey. Complete to Ethnic Sands at midfield. Gain was nine and it's a first down. Will Allen made the tackle, but Ethnic Sands comes up with his second catch of the game. And that might be all for Ken Dorsey. The freshman quarterback for Miami getting a hand from the Miami crowd as Ethnic Sands walks off the football field. A nice reception, but Ken Dorsey, a, a great afternoon throwing the football against the Syracuse Orangemen. Ken Dorsey has done his job, and with six minutes and 15 seconds left, he will give way to Zach Hart. Ethnic Sands, by the way, had two catches coming into the game, has two in this one. Excuse me, it's Troy Prasic at quarterback. He gives it to Jared Payton. Payton picks his way through the orange defense and down to the 45-yard line of Syracuse. That's a gain of six. And Sometimes it's tough to see what 12 is in there because one's righty and one's lefty. Yeah, there's two 12s on, on Miami, Troy Prasic and Zach Hart. And that is Troy Prasic, the true freshman walk-on out of Mims, Florida. Second and four for Miami with 535 left to play. Give to Peyton and he's buried. Downing buried him for a loss of four. Well, that's a big body, Frank. 6'3, 288, the junior downing. Nowhere to run that time for Jared Peyton up the middle. He just beat the offensive lineman, and you're going to have that now with all the changes up front. Guys missing assignments, but the guy that doesn't want to see that again is number 34. I can guarantee you that. Third and nine for Miami. Brazik brings them up to the line of scrimmage in their standard personnel group. Mosier to the top of the screen. Sands split to the bottom. Sands in motion. Pitch to Payton. With Schnupp out front. Jarrett cutting back and gets down to the 43-yard line where he'll be stopped shy of the first down by about a yard or so. Eric Downing, number 90, and Moreland Greenwood, number 50, again in on the tackle. And fans uh, boo it a little bit as Butch sends the punt team onto the field. Fans have long memories too, Frank. Yes, they do. 66 to 13 last year, but uh, Butch says, hey, we'll kick it away. Freddie Capshaw in the punt. Hangs it high. Spot with signal spare catch. He'll get out of the way, and the punt goes into the end zone for a touchback. So only 22 net on a 42-yard punt. And with 4.09 left to go, Syracuse will snap it first and 10 from their 20-yard line. Well, a, 
a decisive victory here by Miami today, and they'll send the number two defensive unit onto the field for the most part. You look at some of the numbers out there. William Joseph is still in the game. But Adrian Wilson, Matt Walters, Jamal Green in there, and Dorsey and Kenny Kelly talking on the sideline. And Kenny saying, son, nice job. It really was. It's two, two weeks in a row that Kenny Dorsey has come on in relief of Kenny Kelly, and he's done a nice job moving the offense. And you like to see that because he was prepared to come in and play, and he has enough poise as a true freshman to come in and really move the offense. He's 22 of 31, 236, and three touchdowns. He did a nice job of just coming in, never panicked, never really got rattled in the two weeks that we've seen him as a starter, and just moved the offense, and, and really a nice transition from one quarterback to another. The thing he does, John, that I'm most impressed with, he doesn't try to overextend himself. He doesn't try to do too much. He takes what the defense gives him for the most part gets the ball to the right people. When you've got skilled people like Moss and Wayne and Franks and Fulcher, just get them the ball in the right position and they'll do the rest. And I think he's learned even in this game that he tried to make the perfect throw a couple times on the fade route and he really was a little guarded and he overshot his receiver a couple times on the far sideline. And, and the next two times he came back to that route, he took a little bit off of it, put a little air underneath the football and both times his receivers came up with big plays. So with 4.09 to go, and you look at uh, Miami's defensive unit, Brian Stinson, 95, Howard Clark, 45, Ken Dangerfield, 47. It's the number two group that is in there. And taking a look at some of the names and numbers, a not too shabby second group either. And Madi Williams will quarterback for Syracuse. Williams, number 17, sophomore out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 6'2", 200 and 19 pounds. D. Brown alongside him in the backfield. Fake to Brown. Williams throwing complete to Campbell, and Campbell up across the 40 to the 45-yard line before Jeff Popovich could make the tackle. Pickup of 25. Three minutes, 58 seconds left to go. And I'm sure that first team defense is saying, hey, no more touchdowns. That's right. We gave them one consolation touchdown here in the fourth quarter. Let's keep it right at that. A look at Jeff Popovich, the senior out of Tucson, Arizona. A guy who really made himself into a Division I football player through sheer will and hard work. From the 45. Williams with protection. Pass incomplete. Going for David Tyree, number 81, at the Miami 40-yard line. Really looked like the same play that he tried to hook up on again. Williams with a rocket throw over the middle the first time to his wide receiver, number 10, Campbell. This time he tries to go outside on the same play to 81 Tyree. David Tyree, the wide receiver, but incomplete. Second and 10 for the Orange with 334 left. Williams, pass down the middle, caught by Brominski at the 30. Still on his feet, finally down at the Miami 25-yard line as Clark and Lewis combine on the tackle. Lewis and Clark, the exploratory You got it. Tackle. You know, I know it's late in the football game with 3-24 uh, left to go in the game, but Williams looks like his arm is okay. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't You try to use him earlier in the football game. I know it's against the second group and guys are scattered around, but he's shown nice zip on the ball on the completion two plays ago, and now this one, a great touch pass over the outstretched arm of Rod Mack, the middle linebacker. Gain was 30 to the Miami 25. Williams, under some pressure. Williams shoved out of bounds by Howard Clark, and that's a loss of almost five. I'll give Howard Clark a credit for a sack there as he shoved Williams out of bounds for the loss. Clark did a nice job with his pursuit angle, getting to the outside and shoving Matty Williams out of bounds. He was looking for a single receiver down the field, but really had no chance to get to him after he left the pocket. And a good job by the linebacking core. You see there Clark and, and Rod Mack in the middle doing a nice job for the Hurricanes on defense. Miami with one interception, one fumble recovery today. That takes their turnover total to 32 on the year. So they're averaging right about three a game. Four wideouts in for the Orangemen on a second and 15. Williams, complete to Brominski, hit right away by Buchanan and pulled back by Clark. 
They're going to mark his forward progress to the 20. That's a gain of 10. It'll be third and five. All right. Go a lot of them straight ahead. We doing it. We doing it. Revenge, baby. Well, I hear Andre King's voice. Stranahan. I heard something. I heard about Stranahan. Stranahan. That's got to be Andre King. <laughs> Look at Steven Brominski, the big senior tight end. Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania, 6'4", 266 pounds. My part of the country. I used to work That's there right. before I came to South Florida. Again, four wide receivers in the formation. Williams on a third and five. Trying to get outside the pocket. Steps back, throws, and incomplete and a penalty flag down. Might have a lineman downfield. Or he was past the line of scrimmage, either one. The illegal man downfield. Well, that's what happens sometimes with a scrambling yeah. quarterback. So Butch will decide it's gonna be either third and long or fourth and five. And Rod Mack, the senior, says, moving back. 2.06 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Miami with this one well in hand. Let's go see the downfield. Gets the offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. So that'll make it a third and 10. So you choose either third and 10 or fourth and five. And Miami chose the third and 10. Body Williams played sparingly today. He has been used to seeing a lot more action in this Syracuse offense, but Paul Pasqualoni decided to go mostly with Nunes and D. Brown as yeah. quarterback today. We were talking about it in the open. We thought they'd split it 50-50 or pretty darn close to that, and Matty Williams really never got into the flow of the game. Third and 10. Two wide receivers to the top of the screen. Williams rolls out, throws complete at the 20, and hauled down at the 18-yard line by Ken Dangerfield. And the receiver there was Tyree, David Tyree, number 81. It'll be fourth and two with a minute and 48 in the clock moving here in the fourth quarter at the Orange Bowl. So let's see what this second unit Miami defense can come up with on a fourth and two. From the Hurricane 17. Williams the quarterback, Bennett in motion. Williams on the rollout, throwing for the corner. That ball is caught and out of bounds at the 10 yard line is David Tyree for a Syracuse first down as he picked up seven. Yeah, Tyree does a nice job in front of Philip Buchanan, the cornerback number 31, the freshman in on the corner. Tyree did a nice job and so did Williams getting the football out with authority on a little bit of a half roll. You see him go outside, and just gets rid of the football to the outside wide open. No one in a green jersey within five yards of Tyree. Easy catch, easy pitch and catch for Syracuse. First and 10 Syracuse with a minute and 17 to go. Four wideouts still in for Syracuse. High snap, Williams pulls it down. Williams gonna try and run. Williams to the five and down he goes right there. James Lewis, number 23, making the tackle along with Rod Mack, number 51. I think that was going to be a quarterback draw regardless, but the bad snap brought Williams outside the tackle box. And as you said, James Lewis there, number 23 in on the tackle, but another good play by the Syracuse quarterback. 49 seconds and counting. You heard a coach say, Matt Walters, watch the draw. Matt Walters, number 91, the defensive tackle for Miami. Williams under pressure and he is going to get sacked Javon Rhodes number 50 comes up with the sack and a loss of eight you called it Javon Rhodes just beats the tackle from the outside use speed to get around the corner and then strength to get to the quarterback a nice job going up the football field by Rhodes top of your screen just the right side he beats Jeff Pylon right to the to the snap of the ball good speed to the outside and good strength to get around the corner Syracuse trying to get the final play off. Four, three, two. I think they got it off. Fake to Brown. Williams throwing. Brominski complete. Rather, Bennett, and he shoved out at the three, and that'll be the football game. No time left on the clock. 
and Miami has come up with an impressive victory over the Syracuse Orangemen. The final at the Orange Bowl, 45 to 13. John? A great game. Uh, the Miami Hurricanes came out and put this team away in a chance they had coming out of the uh, third quarter. They did a good job with the defense right away. The offense took care of business in the second half, and you have to congratulate Butch Davis and this coaching staff. They really did a lot of good things offensively. They built on what Ken Dorsey did well last week, and Butch Davis and this team should be proud the way they handled themselves coming out in the Orange Bowl to wipe away that loss from last year against Syracuse. Revenge is ours, say the Hurricanes. We'll be back to wrap it up here at the Orange Bowl. The final, Miami 45, Syracuse 13. Back with a final word from John and myself right after this. What Miami Hurricanes football on Sports Channel has been brought to you in part by Office Depot. Business is crazy, but Office Depot makes sense. By Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. By Heineken, brewed the same way since 1886. And by Bell South with crystal clear wireless phone service at a great price. The Orange Bowl emptying out following the Hurricanes 45 to 13 win over the Syracuse Orangemen. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you. And John, an impressive performance by Miami in all three phases of the football game. And of course, this is important because it's their seventh win. It qualifies them for postseason and a 12-game regular season schedule. Still a little bit of business to take care of next week as they take on the Temple Owls, and that will get them into the Gator Bowl. But certainly you got to be impressed by the way Ken Dorsey and the offense perform. The defense coming up with a couple of turnovers and Santana Moss with the big punt return for the touchdown. Well, I think Butch Davis is very pleased with the way his team responded coming out, putting back-to-back -to -back games together. You take a look at the final statistics, you see the rushing yards were pretty even, the passing yards fairly even, but Miami clearly dominated this game. You see the first downs, 21 to 14, and the turnovers, three turnovers to only one by the University of Miami, but Ken Dorsey did a great job moving the football, protecting it, giving his wide receivers an opportunity to go up and catch the football, and I thought this defense really took charge after halftime. They came out, shut down Syracuse. The option gave them problems in the first half, but they were too far ahead in the second half for them to give them further problems. Yeah, it's tough to play catch up when you're in the option. You mentioned Ken Dorsey, again, an excellent performance, and you know, sometimes when things are going good, they go really well. He had a couple of touchdown passes already. When this play occurred late in the third quarter, going for the big tight end, Bubba Franks, who was well covered by Clifton Smith, number nine. But watch Franks put a hand up in there, just trying to keep the play alive, and tips it to himself. It's exactly what he did. He tried to keep the play alive, tried to get that big left paw on it, and he tipped it up to himself in the end zone. You see, waiting for him was Reggie Wayne, a big play in tonight's football game. Three touchdown passes for Ken Dorsey. Miami will go to the postseason with a 7-4 and four record and one more regular season game to play against Temple. Thanks for joining us here at the Orange Bowl. Catch more University of Miami football on Sports Channel next Saturday, December 4th at 11.30 p.m when the Hurricanes battle the aforementioned Temple Owls in their regular season finale. Football fans don't miss Sports Channel's Sunday morning playbook. It kicks off at 8.30 with Dolphin Magazine, followed by the Tom Coughlin Show at 9 and the Jimmy Johnson Show at 9.30. Then at 10, it's an hour and a half of in-depth NFL pregame coverage on Sunday morning NFL. That's all right here on Sports Channel. For my broadcast partner and future member of the PGA Senior Tour, John Kajemi, I'm Frank Fort saying goodbye. Once again, the final score, Miami 45, Syracuse 13. So long, everyone.